the NBA season is back. Regular games are back. And this episode is brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. If you're looking at a sports bet responsibly, actually play a very interesting game, go to underdogfantasy.com, download the application, make sure to actually use our promo code AMBITION. You're going to get a free $100, $100 matched when you deposit money to Underdog Fantasy to bet for the first time, especially right now with the NBA season back. Hey, if you're a LeBron James fan, you can go on Underdog Fantasy right now and actually bet whether LeBron James is going to score five assists or more than five assists, less than five assists, over under. You can play responsibly right now at Underdog Fantasy, especially if you're an NBA fan. The season is back. I'm excited as hell. So get to it. Underdog Fantasy. Use our promo code AMBITION and you'll be able to get that $100 deposit match right now. Now back to the show. They gonna love me for my ambition. That new Swifty. Club Ambition Podcast. Cap, welcome to the show. This is a Providence Rhode Island artist, Swifty. New project out. Next day. Yeah, Love how you walk it different. Yeah, how you talk it different. Leave me by my side, feel my home and miss it. Baby, you know my feelings and all my heart's all in it. This Friday, actually. Let me just hop in this motherfucking coat. Yeah, let's get missing her. Let me kiss it. <laughs> Let me touch it. I know niggas in your DMs, baby, and you dub it. Every time I give you attention back, I tell you love it. Niggas ain't hate like a full time job, they don't get no money. Try to see that ass drop. Hm. Baby, I'm on your top. Hm. Baby, I'm on your back. Baby, I did that on my touch. Fuck, trippin' by my bitch, it won't get whacked Yeah, watch it like a goalie Baby, you too bad, yeah, come at me like a stoli I say never again, but you might just get the homie Niggas throw my swag, yeah, that pussy on me You too bad, baby, gon' put that pussy on me Nah, I want you bad, baby, and I know you want me That's off the brand new Swifty EP project That's cha- That song, song right there is called Different And it's very different and very hard Off of Watch this, the EP by Isaiah, our friend Swifty, out this Friday. Make sure to check it out. Progress Round artist right there, Club Ambition artist right there. Check him out, support him. But we're back. Another episode, 108. We got Marlon in the building, holding it down. Engineer extraordinaire, always here. You already know what's going on in this, you know. And we got the co-host extraordinaire. Noel in the building. What the fuck Leaving me things? hanging again. Bro, bro. Nah, that's I'm the third sorry, time. That's What's the third going on? Huh? This is crazy. <laughs> this is, I'm sorry, bro. I'm sorry, bro. Why this nigga throwing up gang signs? <laughs> what the fuck is this? Oh, he threw a gang sign up? Nigga, you didn't see that shit, bro. I didn't see <laughs> it. This nigga just throwing shit up, bro. <laughs> nigga, this nigga got me scared. No gang signs, Marlon. Bro, bro. No gang signs, Marlon. I ain't a part of this Guatemala game. This nigga throwing up, bro. I swear to God. Marlon. That's crazy. Marlon is just. Is, He's stretching his fingers. I have he, in he has cramp. He has cramp. He's cramping his fingers. Arthritis in my fingers. He has cramp. Uh, cramp in his finger. Arthritis in his fingers is crazy. <laughs> Shout out if you're here to watch the. You can skip ahead into the timestamps. I'm gonna mark it down. If you're here to watch the Tropicana Danny interview, that's right. The viral security guard that dances. He's from Providence, Rhode Island. Check him out. He's huge on TikTok. He's talking about his the inspirational things he's going. He's doing right now with the students and also the controversies he's faced with these actual local malls in Rhode Island. So make sure to check that out. Skip ahead if you want. But for starters, we're going to talk about Rhode Island news topics. And then we're going to talk about pop culture, hip hop and Glorilla. You know, <laughs> she's obviously a bit of the both. But, uh, she's she's on some shit. She's acting up uh, recently, man. We got to call her Glorilla out properly. But for starters, um, biggest news story in Rhode Island right now. For those who don't know, Governor Dan McKee has officially fired a city councilman, Miguel Sanchez, over tweets supporting Palestine and also the Palestine rally that he attended. And we were actually there. We covered the Palestine rally. We interviewed people. We were doing news coverage at the Palestine rally, and we were able to cover it and actually interview the people in attendance in Providence, Rhode Island, downtown Providence, Rhode Island. We're going to actually read the announcement by Miguel Sanchez right here. He tweeted it out. This is a viral news story right now. National news happened right here out of Providence, Rhode Island. This is Miguel Sanchez, friend of the show. He's been on the program. Um, you know, open invite, 
Open invite for Miguel again, and also open invite for Dan McKee, the governor. Holiday season is here. That's right. That means that you are most likely going to be looking for a coquito to buy. Now, instead of buying a coquito from your local bootlegger, especially if you're in Providence, Rhode Island, we have our own minority-owned coquito company called The Island Coquito, formerly known as Papi's Coquito. That's right. You can go to a local liquor store right now, such as Tropical Liquors on Cranston Street, or just reach out to their Instagram page, The Island Coquito, and purchase an actual minority-owned Providence, Rhode Island brand company, Coquito, in-house Coquito, with no actual milk inside of the Coquito. And I'm not lying. This is not because this is a promotion. It actually tastes very good. We've had people in the studio taste it. It tastes delicious. Um, so go try it out if you haven't yet. The Island Coquito, Providence, Rhode Island brand Coquito, especially right now for the holiday season. Perfect to buy. And like I said, you don't got to worry about it expiring as fast or like reaching out to a bootlegger to get it done illegally or the same day. You can go to a store right now in Rhode Island, liquor store. Call your local liquor store. Check if they have it. A lot of them most likely will have it. The Island Coquito. Check them out right now. Back to the show. For those who don't know, Miguel Sanchez was a city councilman, but aside from that, he was a constituent service staffer for the office, the governor office of Rhode Island. So he was an aide. I guess what would that maybe consist of if we're just thinking off the top of our head, like advising? So a lot of those positions. Was it as influential? It really? Yeah. So those those aid positions, usually what you're doing is you're doing research, policy research. Yeah. Um, you're creating plans for the governor. If he's doing constituent outreach and stuff like that, constituent services, his job is probably just to research how, you know, what his constituents want. How yeah. he can better reach out his constituents. That helps a lot when you're doing, you know, campaign stuff. So Miguel Sanchez tweeted, On Friday, I was fired by Governor McKee for my public position on the, tro uh, on the atrocities occurring in Gaza since October 7th. I have used my voice as an elected official to condemn all violence against any innocent civilians. As Israel continues to escalate its massacre in Gaza, the need to speak out for innocent Palestinian civilians has never been more urgent regardless of personal consequences. I join the 80% of Democrats who support a ceasefire and the increasing number of elected officials who are speaking out in favor of de-escalation. Governor McKee may have taken my job, but he won't pressure me into silence while a genocide is occurring in front of our eyes. Now, this is a very powerful response by this councilman. Following this, we also have the actual governor's office, but I guess governor's response, we can say, um, to the situation. They confirmed that Mr. Sanchez's last day of service was that Friday. I also want to provide you, this is the governor's office saying, I want to provide you some additional background. Here are some comments we gave last week on Tuesday when asked about Mr. Sanchez. They gave this to the news. Mr. Sanchez is an associate of our constituent services office the governor's position on israel is clear the governor was unequivocally condemned has unequivocally condemned the despicable acts of war and terror perpetuated by hamas against the people of israel the governor has also agreed with the president that both israelis and palestinians deserve to live in safety and peace isn't it israelites or does it matter i never heard of israelis and multiple like that i haven't heard that either i thought it was israelites me too you know, the governor strongly believes that words matter and words can have the potential to fan the flames of hate and division. Any acts of violence will not be tolerated in Rhode Island. At the direction of the governor, a member of our senior staff has spoken with the individual and the situation is under review. At this time, we will not be commenting on it further. Now, hopefully we might be able to get Governor Sanchez, not Governor Sanchez, <laughs> that. Imagine he becomes the governor one day. That would be a full circle moment. God bless. You know, it's possible. Anything is possible in this world. Dan McKee, Governor Dan McKee one day in his uh, actual studio for an interview. Hopefully Miguel Sanchez, the count a former councilman now, right? No, still councilman. Still councilman? Yeah. So he wasn't fired from his, his councilman position? No. Or you can't be? You have to be voted out? He'd have, yeah. No, you'd have to be removed by your constituents here. Yeah. So they'd have to do like a whole thing to get him out. So to be clear, he was fired from... 
his constituents working in the office with Dan McKee. Yeah, that's his real job. That's his real job with Dan McKee in the office. He's, but he's still a councilman. His time is a city council job. He's still a city councilman. So he's still a councilman. Yes. Okay. Okay. And this was confirmed, do you think? No, you no I'm that? telling you for a yeah. fact, bro. For him to get kicked off that council, a lot has to happen. Yeah. There were people stealing their own like campaign funds still keeping their job on the council. Okay, okay. That's why I'm telling you, like, yeah, yeah. yeah he's fine. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take your word for it. I don't want to get killed on TikTok. I'm going to make no, this a separate clip. I'm going to blame Noel's ass. Yo, <laughs> I'm telling you right now, his job on city council is... Unless tomorrow city council wakes up and... I mean, I can confirm with him too. I can just text no, him. No, because the thing is, you'd have to pass a resolution yeah, to the yeah. city council to get him off the council. Okay, that, that makes sense. That hasn't happened. That like, makes sense. Council hasn't even met yet. This is just some deranged so that, governor. So that's why there's a confusion where some people feel like maybe he was fired from the councilman position. Oh, hell no. That's not possible. Okay, okay. That makes sense now. Okay. But overall, my take is this. I think this might be historic for Rhode Island because I don't recall whenever a governor has fired an actual state employee for a political view or opinion. It never happened during Black Lives Matter, whether you were for or against Black Lives Matter. It never happened during the January 6th riots, whether you were for even saying the word riot some people don't think it was a riot to this day a lot of, there was people that attended january 6th that were from rhode island right there were state employees and actual political staff members stating opinions about all these subjects but when it came to this one he chose to fire an actual employee in the state why? Why this one specifically? So there's where a lot of people are drawing conclusions of hypocrisy in a sense where this is only going to cause more division. And in his own words, how he was saying about, you know, the Miguel Sanchez post, the governor's team was saying that this is fanning the flames of evil, etc. You can say this is doing the same thing, you know, doing the same thing in a sense where it's like, so just because... State officials don't agree with what the governor feels like he's firing them. So now it makes us feel like if you're working for the governor, if you're working for the state, you have to think like him or else. You know, there's no place of agree to disagreement. There's no place of let's have a conversation. There's no place of dialogue. There's just, hey, you're fired right away. You can't post that. And for context, when you look at the post from Miguel... Sanchez, he definitely was siding with the Palestinians. He was saying that he supports Palestinians. He's calling for a ceasefire. And he also feels like there is a sense of a genocide happening on behalf of the Israeli people. You know, the government of Israel, Israel and Palestine. That's the main conflict that he was highlighting. But there were people calling him a Hamas sympathizer. He didn't, um, he, he was supporting terrorists and all of that. And from my recollection, I saw him, there was posts where he was literally calling out Hamas. There was, um, you know, people there that we interviewed at the rally. We were there doing news at the rally. People at the rally were condemning Hamas, questioning Hamas. Their own Palestinian people were like, well, Hamas, we don't really support them, like what they're doing, blah, blah, blah. Like, we don't, that's, you know. But that's the situation here. It was a sticky situation where it's like, one side wants you just to use certain words and do it this way, etc., you know, it, it becomes more of like a picking side battle rather rather than instead of politicizing this whole situation, when people are just trying to, you know, in their opinion, call for peace, you know, now you can be fired because you calling for peace gets interpreted as you supporting Hamas because you are calling for peace from the Palestinian side, but they're calling you a hypocrite because, hey, you're not calling for peace for the Israeli. How about the Israeli people that are dying, you know? I've never seen, so, like, this This is unprecedented, unprecedented times right now. Did I even say that word right, right before um, uh, all these people, John DePetro, get, get at me? Unpreced, unprecedented times right now that we're facing in Rhode Island and across the country where, like, certain posts now can have you fired from your job. And for those who don't know, I believe Miguel Sanchez is reportedly making $50,000 from this job, this state job. So now he's no longer going to be making that. If he's still a councilman... He's going to still make that, which is, I think, 15000 15, 15, yeah. from that. Um, so, yeah. Noel, your thoughts? I have two quick things. Um, first one is, 
I, I just find it so ironic, and I agree with Vic, that, you know, when BLM was happening, I vividly remember my city councilman, Jim Taylor, supporting Blue Lives Matter and denouncing BLM. Nothing happened to him. He still worked for the state, um, and he still works for the state now. No one fired him. There was no repercussions for his actions. Um, and I'm not mad at that. I think you should be allowed to speak on your political views. Now, this is kind of my beef with this entire situation, because Vic is right. This is unprecedented. I've never seen a governor um, or a state, high-ranking state official fire, especially a city councilman, out of anybody um, from their position f for speaking their political views. Like, you're, you're, you're a politician. Mm -hmm. That's what you do. You speak your political views. So um, my biggest beef with this situation, above everything else, is the blatant hypocrisy that I'm seeing. Oh, my God, how much you people bitch about how you're censored by the left mm -hmm. and the left and the biased media doesn't allow you to speak and how Twitter was evil until Elon saved it. And look at the, Re the Republicans in Rhode Island just rallying behind Dan McKeon saying he's amazing. He's doing the right thing. He Miguel was supporting terrorists. He was supporting terror. No, Miguel was literally just expressing his freedom of speech and saying that Palestine deserves to be protected. The, the civilians of Palestine and Israel needs to be condemned for their actions. That is freedom of speech. That is the thing you've been bitching mm -hmm. that you don't have. So why are you okay that someone else is robbing someone of their freedom of speech? Again, it's just hypocrisy. A lot of hypocrisy. Yeah, your views only matter until it affects someone that you don't agree with, then they no longer matter. And it's yeah. that simple. It's just crazy. It's, um, it sucks, but it's happening. And, you know, in my opinion... Fuck all terrorists. Hamas, they are misrepresenting. They are not a, a proper representation at all. We speak with Palestinian people. They do not stand with Hamas. There might be some that do. Not none that I've met. Not any of the at the rally that I spoke to directly. You know, so we can't assume, lie. It's called fake outrage. We got to stop that. Go to the source directly you know, and actually address the issue, interview people, talk to the actual people being affected rather than just trying to get some clicks and cite people and cause this, this information through post. You're going to go nowhere with that because look at it. Look at it now. The same people that were doing that for being censored, you know, like Noel pointed out, are being hypocrites now for applauding someone being fired for being censored. Meanwhile, you didn't want to be censored. The Republicans never wanted to be censored. Now that now we have a Democrat being fired, showing it as a sign of censorship, and they're applauding it. So this is just a sense of hypocrisy. It's, it only work if it works in your favor. It works in your favor. That's how this shit is. So politics is all a scam. It's all some bullshit. You know, God, God bless, God bless them. Let's move on. Um, more news to talk about. Shit that's actually happening as well with life and death matters in Rhode Island. A Pawtucket couple in Rhode Island leave behind four kids after they were a target of a shooting. Oh, my God. They were murdered in their car. A 29-year-old Brian Fernandez and a 30-year-old Shraylock Ross. This was 12 a.m. Saturday. They were shot dead in their truck. Providence Police Department are saying that they're making progress on an investigation. Allegedly, there might be a gang situation, a gang affiliation. This might be a gang conflict, they're saying. But leaving four kids behind is insane. It's insane. Um, there's social media posts allegedly from the family members. And yeah, it, it's, a rough, it's a rough situation. Prayers for all the families involved. To be a target of a actual shooting is, is pretty insane because they had to know where you were living at, where you're from. The whole situation. Um, I think that this happened. I think I marked it down. This happened in Providence. But the couple is from Pawtucket. Originally from Pawtucket. They stay in Pawtucket. But this happened in Providence. Uh, Cranston police and Providence police were involved. Holiday season is here. Shootings and robberies tend to rise up. People, please stay safe. Protect your family. And pray for the best. Real quick, here's a reminder that this episode is brought to you by one of our sponsors, Agonza, our friend 
of the show, a gonza, one of the dopest artists out of Providence, Rhode Island. She's an artist, actual artist, painter. She draws some of the best murals that if you come to Rhode Island any time of the day, driving by the city, you'll see her stuff all over the city, literally. It's the things that stand out. It, it, it actually brightens and heightens the levels of tourism that this state represents. Smallest thing in the country, but some of the biggest and brightest stars, and A. Gonza is a representation of that. If you want to check out her work, I recommend you checking out her website, agonza.com, A-G-O-N-Z-A.com. Or if you want to follow her on Instagram, agonzaart is the handle on Instagram. I recommend you checking her out. Give her a follow. And she also does commission pieces. She was worked with everyone from University of Rhode Island to the actual mayor of the city to making mural pieces with Trippy Red. Some of the biggest artists in the game. Recently linking up with NLE Choppa to give him some pieces in person. A Boogie, you name it. A Gonza Art. Check her out. One of the dopest artists to come out of Rhode Island. And now back to the episode. So this is the governor of Massachusetts calling out Rhode Island. This is Mara Healy. Here's a speech right here. We're a great state. We're a great state. I know some of you pop over to Rhode Island. It's nice to visit. You can shop there. You can have a meal. You can go gamble, whatever. But I want you living here in Massachusetts. I want you raising your families in Massachusetts. I want you growing businesses in Massachusetts, right? But that's going to happen if we make life more affordable. We're a great state. There is a New England beef. New England beef. The Massachusetts governor is calling us out. Calling calling Rhode Island out. Fucking hater. Oh, my God. We, we this are, is crazy. We're a fun state, bro. This is crazy. I never in my life saw, you know, New England states, you know, I guess it's like Bloods and Crips now. It's Massachusetts and who, if whose Bloods? Is Massachusetts Bloods and, and Rhode Island's the Crips? Like, what is going on? Why is it getting to this level? Why is this? Stop throwing up gang signs. This guy. <laughs> this nigga's concerning me, bro. You got to stop that shit. I don't even know what he threw up. I don't know what he threw up either. I think this nigga's just doing designs. <laughs> That's like origami. <laughs> I think he's trying to do sign language. He just <laughs> Oh, I think he locked his fingers and he can't even open them no more. <laughs> this nigga's crazy. Arthritis fucking me up. Arthritis got him fucked up. Yeah. Bro, it's nice to visit. You can shop there. You have you can have a meal. But you, you can gotta, gamble. Whatever. But don't live here. Come back home to Massachusetts. You got to understand why this is so funny. For so many years, you know what they used to say about Ma Rhode Island? What they used to say? Rhode Island used to pass laws Massachusetts passed 10 years ago. Mm. We used to always be behind Massachusetts. That was always the argument. Now look at this woman begging for her host to stay. Listen, crying think, for bro, mass, to stay. Mass housing is mad expensive, bro. Bro, like listen, four or five beds for an apartment, bro. Yeah, and message to the governor, right? Governor of Massachusetts, you are correct. Affordable housing is needed in Massachusetts. That's why they are moving to Rhode Island. And Until you do so, let them come to Rhode Island. Nah, we, stay over there. Come over here, hey. And they racking nah. up the prices, bro. No, 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 fuck but, that because they're coming over here to our fucking state. And racking and up the prices. Exactly. And now you motherfuckers are putting up our <laughs> prices when we've been here before y'all. Bro, I ain't gonna lie to you. He's right. I went to a bar, right? And I'm talking to this shorty. And she's trying to tell me about Prov. And I'm like, where Bitch? you from? No, and she's like, oh, right. from Newton, Mass. I'm like... Shut the fuck up, and Newton. From Ma Newton. Who the Mass. fuck is from Newton, Mass? Tell fuck me about Prov, bro. But the more the more I've met people, there's a lot of people that I've been meeting lately that happen to not be from Rhode Island. That they're new to Rhode Island. Yeah, it's a larger number than I expected. Like it's it's pretty crazy in the in the gym at the mall. A lot of people tend to be from. I have DMs from uh, older women, families, etc. It was my first time here in Rhode Island. You got older, uh, and they you want older women in your DMs. Yeah, hundred percent. And they want uh, they want advice. Like she wanted. Uh, shit. I see that you post about Rhode Island. She's like, I'm here. I'm new here in Rhode Island from Massachusetts. I'm looking for photographers. Rhode Island photographers. She looking for young men. <laughs> so it happens. <laughs> you know, niggas DMs is Craigslist. <laughs> <laughs> So they, they want it, man. They they man, want they want what? <laughs> yeah. They want that Rhode Island blood. That Rhode Island blood. But right. listen, this is only validating. You're gonna get a cramp. <laughs> this is only validating <laughs> the fact that Rhode Island is popping. Ri is popping. It's only validating that, right? It's confirming it. And at the same time, our tourism is skyrocketing, and our prices are going up. And our food is better. And our food is better. Oh, we got no. better our, food than Massachusetts. Our bitches are better. Fuck you talking about. Our food has always been top tier. Our food has always been better. The hookah's better. The spots is better. 
fuck out of here. That white lady's mad because we still have hoes, bro. The, the bubbler, the <laughs> bubblers are better. We got better bubblers. We got... You be putting your mouth on the bubbler. <laughs> you a nasty nigga. Massachusetts bro, people put their mouths bubbler. on bubblers. Rhode Islanders, bubbler we don't put we don't put our since, mouths on bubblers since high school, bro. Rhode Islanders do not put their mouths on bubblers like Massachusetts people do. You really think that that, that we are better bitches than Mass? Of course we do. For real? What? Where they at? Nigga here. You gotta look around. Like, people say they're on my IG. People always, they're always on said IG? that. Swear to God, you better start <laughs> sliding them my way, bro. I'll but send you three right this now. This is a is a very is a very funny situation, man. Um. Yeah, the governor of Massachusetts calling us out. Hey, again, governor, open invite. If you wanna, if you wanna come here, if you wanna, you know, the governor can come on this podcast, Rhode Island's number one podcast. You can come on here. We can talk. We can show you more examples. You know, maybe if we take the governor to Broad Street, let her try some Dominican food. You know what I'm saying? Maybe take her to some Jamaican spots. Make a some, movie. Some Nigerian food. You know, sh- show her some patties, some Jamaican patties. You know what I'm saying? What, what, where else can we take her? We could take her to like um, so many spots, bro. We're going to get some hookah. On get some fed. hookah. Get some hookah on Federal Hill. What, we can. Then what's, she'll be like, what's damn. That, what's that going to do for our prices, though? Then it's going to show her. It's going to show her like, oh, this is why everyone's we're coming to Rhode Island. Island. It's a movie. Yeah. Because we, we, make we are better. Food. We are better. We're better. They're just better. Bro, every Boston person better. I ever met comes to Profs again. Every lit. weekend, That's Boston people come to Rhode Island. That's a fact, bro. Bro, right now, right now, the clubs on Broad Street charge $40 to get in. You want to know why? Because niggas in Boston are paying it. Niggas yeah. coming from it's Boston true. are paying it. People are doing it's it. True. People are doing it. And so, hey, Rhode Island, crazy. Rhode Island, we are on top, baby. We, we are on top. And shout out to the governor we of did. Massachusetts for confirming it for us. You know, yep. we already knew it. Yeah. Nigga cleaned off the disrespect. It's just, yeah. it's just a reminder. It's just a reminder. We didn't need no vein popping no, lady yeah. to let us know. You know what I'm saying? God bless her heart. That'd be dope if she does come on though. That'd be fire. Oh, that'd be hilarious. <laughs> that'd be fly as fuck. That is that'd crazy. Be fire. Though, you know. Um, mass people really do think that better. Speaking of situations, um, this has been viral for a while. For those who don't know, Leonardo DiCaprio <laughs> is back in the news. Hold up! Wait! 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 Did because you make, did you make this? No, no, no. Someone did. I'm about to say, I'm like, damn, you got time, bro. I don't know who made it. It doesn't have the credits. Um, But Leonardo DiCaprio has been only dating women 25 year old or younger. This is a fact. Since the year 1998, when he dated an 18 year old, to now, you know, most recent times, he's dating a 25 year old. He's never dated anyone above. The age of 25, bro, right? Wh- why is this fucking news, bro? Listen, I'm going to show you why. You're going to think it's, it's disgusting. Why are we talking Thank about Thank you. This? Leonardo, let's see. Leonardo DiCaprio's age right now. I know you'd be in that list. You love Leonardo DiCaprio. Uh, I would date him. I'll go on a date with him. I won't kiss him, but I'll go on a date with him. He's 48 years old, right? Leonardo DiCaprio's 48 years old. If Drake can do it, <laughs> why can't he? Listen, I think Leo's a bit sexier than Drake. Um... Look at this. Oh, no. Le agarró el culo. Oh, no. Oh, no. She put her finger in his butt. Oh, no. <laughs> and Leo's, Leo's latest victim you know was what? pictured fingering That's his butt. That's what it is. That's oh, what it is. No. At a Halloween party. He, know, he knows that younger, yeah. younger girls be in with that shit. That's I the thing. I see why he's doing it. I see the vision, he bro. He got the cheap ass boxes, too. Look at that. No no tape of like comfort, bro. Just Oh, man. She, oh, and she has no shame. She has no. She's gonna sniff it after. Look at oh. looking at the camera. She might lick her fingers. Look at her looking at the camera. Yeah, no she shame. Gonna lick her fingers. No shame. You see that jaw? That's a shorty that licks her fingers. Oh, she fingers oh man. Mm. No shame. Oh my god. This oh. was before they got into the apartment. It seems like. Why are you not grabbing his penis? Why are you fingering his butt? This is insane, bro. Why does he look so old and gross? <laughs> he looks like the dad who shouldn't have been let in the party. Like, who, who, who brought their uncle to my function, bro? Bro, this is amazing. This is amazing. Listen, Leo, Leo's out here, man. How, who is this shorty? So this is right here, I, I, I believe is a model. Italian model. She's an Italian model. Vittoria Seriti. Seriti. Vittoria Seriti. Italian model. <laughs> they were at a Halloween party. <laughs> <laughs> Why you say it like that? Yeah, I think you got the first part right. Definitely. I, I absolutely Victoria. think you did. Yeah. Seriti. I saw the Seriti. Seriti. I, 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 I saw they pronounced that say with a with a ch. 
Cheretti. I you think know it's what I'm saying? Cheretti. Yo, this nigga. Mozzarella! No, stop. Don't ever bring this nigga to a Italian restaurant. He's going to be bro, saying words. Oh, out, man. Bro. Listen, I love, I love different coaches, man. They're, they're so awesome. We're told LDC, a.k.a. Long Dick um, DiCaprio. No, no, no. Leon DiCaprio, I guess. LDC. Was outside chilling by himself. <laughs> getting gay. some fresh air. <laughs> it seems. When Vittoria joined him on the deck. At which point they started snuggling with each other. You this know they got a big dick, bro. <laughs> Does he have a small one? <laughs> are, are we are we taking any bets? If we're taking any bets, I'm putting my money's all on long, um, rather than short. I'll tell you that much. Yeah, I think, I, I it ain't guess, the money, nah, bro. Honestly, it ain't the, and it ain't the looks. I don't think they're going for the. Dick He's a handsome guy, though. I think they're just going for ass now. He's a handsome guy. Even on the new movie, he looks like ugly. Who's this? Like Vito- he knows how to look oh, that's, ugly. That's Vittoria. This is Vittoria Sariti. Hot shots. He always dates like these white models. white skinny models. models that's yeah. a, he has a type. But listen, I respect it. He is not like Ray Shrimmer. I don't got no type. Mm. He has a type. Yeah. So then you have to respect that he has a type. You know, 25 year old, some people find it creepy, but it's legal. It's 25, it's young, you know. I'm going to be honest with you. If I'm in my 40s and I got a 20 year old coming my way, how often are 48 year olds <laughs> dating nah. other 48 years olds? If they're single, like if you're newly single at 48, men usually don't do it. Do men usually date 48 no. year olds? I don't really think so. It's usually if you've been together for a long time. I, I think they're, if, if they're in their 40s, they're married. Bro, but I'm like 24. And sometimes I talk to 20 year olds and I'd be like, yo, you're fucking stupid. Oh, 100%. <laughs> like, yo, you need 100%. Like, yo, but that's the thing, right? Yo, like, so that's bad. the thing. So older day young and young want to day old. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So, like, that's the thing. I can't I can't be around twenty like a twenty year old more than like ten minutes, bro. Speaking of um That's a fact. Of young actors, rest in peace, young white actor I mean now horrible transition. Let's just keep it going. This is important news. Matthew Perry has passed away. He was known famously as the actor from Friends. He I'll played Chandler Bing you. in Friends. He was fifty four years old. They found him dead in his house. In his jacuzzi. They said that he allegedly drowned, I believe yeah, I saw. Was drowned. Drowning in the jacuzzi, right? It had to have been overdosed, bro. His last post six days ago was what it looked to be him in his jacuzzi by himself, staring off at night in a jacuzzi. Six days after, he's now passed away in his jacuzzi, unfortunately. He was an inspiration for a lot of people because he is a recovering drug addict, right? He spoke about that a lot. He had a lot of drug addiction issues he faced, and he faced issues with sobriety. He talked about this constantly, especially in the recent years, right? And a lot of things are resurfacing, you know, clips of him speaking about how he wanted to be remembered as, right? There's a clip um, right now about the time when he spoke about Keanu Reeves. You know, he had a beef with Keanu Reeves, the famous actor Keanu Reeves. And he said that he wishes that it was Keanu Reeves that passed away instead of Heath Ledger, something of that le- of that le- uh, that nature. No, yeah, so they said. had like a very personal beef, right? So a lot of trolls are using that as like a ha ha moment, some karma shit. Yeah, some karma shit. But it's like that's disgusting to point out. Yeah, I get wild. it, but it's like it's it's pretty disgusting to point out. Yeah. Um. But police in L.A. found him. In his home around 4 p.m. Saturday, the police department said, and the fire department uh, rep- uh, responded to the scene. They were first on the scene. They declared that Matthew Perry was dead. You know, that was the statement by the police department. There's still an ongoing investigation right now. They're still investigating everything right now to confirm they're going to do an autopsy. There was no drugs found at the scene. So the allegations of a relapse, people are saying it's more likely not the possibility. But we still have to wait for an autopsy to happen. This is one of the most historic TV characters of all time. Legendary, classic, funny as fuck. The day when this happened, I got the news. I was like, what the? I got like, I, I had like a sour feeling like my throat. I was like, what? It didn't feel right. Like, what? Chandler died? It was someone that would bring so many joy, joyful moments and laughter like on the screen every time I would watch Friends. Like, I watched every season of Friends like 20 times already. Like, Man, but it goes to remind you where 
you know, one day you're here, one day you're gone. Anyone could die at any moment. So you have to cherish those moments while you're here. Cherish your life. Cherish your friends. Cherish cherish your loved ones. Um, especially, man, he was 54 years old. That's young. You know, that's older than us. That's twice our age, but that's still young. Mm -hmm. That is still young to pass away. You know, Lord knows how long he would have lived on if it wasn't due to the drowning. So rest, <coughs> rest in peace, Chandler. <coughs> Aside from that, there was also more conspiracies. Because he was one of the people that would promote, I think he might have been paid, it might have been by Pfizer, but he was promoting the vaccinations. So he had merch literally about getting vac vaccinated and they would use like the Friends font, you know, that classic Friends font that people would make merch of using the same letters and shit from Friends. Yeah. They did that. He did that with the vaccination and he would like sell merch about it, about get vaccinated. So people are like saying, oh, is, is it that? Is it because of that? Getting vaccinated doesn't cause you to drown, drown in, in a jacuzzi. jacuzzi. That is not gonna. That's not. You know what I'm saying. So, listen. God bless. I don't think that's the that's the case here. But we have to wait for the autopsy. But that I definitely want to talk about that. I didn't show the photo, did I? Let me show the photo. His last post right here for those who are watching on YouTube. This was Matthew Perry's last post right here. Very sad. And pretty. Um. What's it called? Cryptic. Not cryptic. But like when shit happens after. Pretty eerie. Yeah, eerie. I guess eerie. It's a big ass jacuzzi. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful jacuzzi, bro. He he really was um living large, man. He had a successful successful career, recognized everywhere he went. You know what's crazy though? When he passed, the first thing I thought was, Yo, our era really just will end at some point. Hell yeah. Like our generation, the things we saw growing up, the people we saw, the people we idolized, we're all gonna die. Hundred percent. And we're just gonna move on and um it's really just what you leave behind that determines whether people are going to remember you or not. And, like, that shit really hit me so hard. Because mm -hmm. people are like, oh, my God, our childhood people are dying. And I'm just like, well, they were going to they were going to anyway. Yeah. It's a new generation. Like, we, the older we get, the more people die, the more things happen, people die off. That's how shit is. You know, it's very unfortunate, but it's, it's, it's literally how shit is, so. I feel like we should just be celebrating what he did leave behind at that point. 100%. You have to celebrate it because you can't, you know... Cherish the good, the good moments, the best moments, and especially what he did. Like that show, if it wasn't already one of the most number one reran shows, syndicated shows of all time, you think it's gonna stop now? I don't know, bro. I, bro, I watched that shit on TBS every morning when I went to school, when I came back from school, bro. Come on, classic. Um, speaking of someone leaving behind a legacy, Taylor Swift. What were they called? Is a message to the fans, Swifties. The Swifties have now made Taylor Swift an official billionaire, $1.1 billion, according to Forbes. Why? Let's break down why. Listen to these numbers. Taylor Swift, off of her catalog alone, is at, has, has been valued to have made $400 million. Off of concerts, she's been valued to have made $370 million. That's off of concerts, $370 million. Streams, that's $120 million off of real estate homes, including in Rhode Island, the mansions in Rhode Island, $120 million. Again, royalties, $80 million. And these are some, these are some recent numbers, for example, to put it, put it in better perspective, for those who don't understand why Taylor Swift is so great and so huge. Listen to this. Her new movie that just dropped last week made $92 million in three days. In three days in theaters. Her movie, right? That's wild. This is not a Martin Scorsese film, a Quentin Tarantino film. This is a Taylor Swift, a Taylor Swift directed tour recap movie. And also, this week has been reported that her re recorded, re released album. From what, like 10 years ago? Yeah, that's what... Yep. 1989. 1.5. 1.5 million copies in one week. Oh, my God. Her new album, Taylor Swift... Is a god. ...is on a different stratosphere. I don't think we understand. Is it her or her people? No, it's her. It's a bit of both. I think Taylor Swift arguably has 
the biggest fan base yeah. of all time. It takes marketing. Like you, like, it this takes is so crazy. much to get there, bro. Like, this is crazy. Yeah. And then if you go around, certain might, people, you might ask them. Good ass person. They might not even heard her songs because she's not played. It's not a black culture's. No, she, she, know. she's for white girls, without a doubt. It's for white girls. It, but it's like, it's mm. such a wild, like. Bro, white girl culture is a real thing. Man, this is another validation that, you know. Didn't you pull up? Women, women run the world. I did not. Pulled up to a what? A Swifty concert? No, he said that I pulled up playing Swifty because he wants to start this narrative about me. But if I start saying that this nigga pulled up playing fucking Playboy Cardi, you'll be mad as fuck. People will not you did. believe you. <laughs> no, you, you did up. though because you're a fraud. You pulled up. I, I heard it outside. Wrong. When? You're a fraud. We literally heard you when we got here. Today! And this is my president! I heard you pulled up. Yeah. I've been thinking about Amistad. <laughs> I was like, damn, bro. Oh, put put that shit down, nigga. nigga damn. I, was, I got shooters. <laughs> What? You what? got shooters? They're wearing bro. red and blue? <laughs> All right, bro. Listen, All right, bro. I, I've been playing Swifty, though, I because... To, I would have to be brain dead to pull up fucking listen bro, to Playboy Cardi. All of, all of uh, Swifty's, like, uh, you know, Taylor Swift's success lately has been made me, like, play her music. I've been playing that shit. I heard some of the mouth. Let's not act like you don't be riding around. Shake it off. Shake, shake it, it off. off. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Haters want to hate, 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 hate. I don't hate. listen to her music. I just want to play, 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 like play, song. play. I don't want to hate, 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 hate. I just want some cake, 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 cake. Is that really Shake it doing? off. Shake it off. It's whatever we want it to be, nigga. We Swifties now. Oh, no, how about there's this one? There's nothing wrong, Ooh, bro. love. How does one go? Love. Hold up. You. Wait, 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 hold up. I'll harmonize you go. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. We're going to get this right. Lover, number one song of her streaming, all right? And then we got Cruel Summer. I fucking hate that song. Cruel Summer. Cruel Summer. How was she dancing in the video? Cruel Summer. That's why she's up there. Yeah, and no. that's, that's why, why she's, she's up there. That's why she's up there, nigga. Because she makes fucking hits. Bakers. <laughs> Real, uh, respect. No, 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 stop, talk, stop talking. You, you people keep unless, saying unless you respect Swifty, I want to hear it. People Bro, keep saying why? Respect... Why is hip hop suck this year? Maybe because Taylor Swift, Swift keeps fucking back. dropping. Fuck you talking That's about. That's why. Fuck you talking about. <laughs> she blew a whole fucking genre out the fucking way, nigga. If you want to be great, go listen to Taylor Swift. It's Taylor Swift's <laughs> fucking year. It's Swifty season, and we're not talking about Swifty from Rhode Island. Yeah. Respectfully. 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 <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But let's make that collab happen. Let's make it happen. Because you stole his name, Swift. bitch. Yo, yo, I'm what, just kidding. I'm just what, kidding. I'm just kidding. What woman do you know is making a song with Ice Spice? Oh, they should have never made that song. That's just horrible. But it worked for numbers and engagement. Oh, no. Stop it being was, it was Oh, damn. <laughs> it, was, it was strategy, 100%. <laughs> Yo, people swear I'm a hater, bro. Yo, like, saying that with that voice is hilarious. Like, Stop being a hating ass nigga. <laughs> Yo, bro, I think that Taylor Swift is a great fucking person, but I don't listen to her music. Nah, it's I don't either, bro. You know I'm trolling out my ass. Listen, we don't even know her, Mar. She could be an asshole. Nah, I think she's a good according ass to, According to Kim, not well, her and Kim might be cool again. But remember they had that stiff? Yeah. Let's not even elongate the situation. Let's, let's, we don't got to make this episode too long. But. I just want to ask you a question, though. Honestly, cause I remember Joe said this shit. Now that she's reached this stratosphere, and this is the same question I have for Drake. Yeah. Because she she's re she's getting this much wealth because she keeps remaking her music and taking control of her her, yeah. her um publishing. She keeps licking people. My nigga, no bullshit. Why don't you start your own streaming platform? Listen, Taylor Swift. You I have think the ability to change she, the market. She has two more albums until she owns a hundred percent. Of her actual full catalog, right? She uh -huh. has to redrop, re-release two of her older albums again, yeah. right? Yeah. And those are two, I guess, most recent ones, I think, because she's kind of working backwards, I think, with the re-release. So is so is she fully remaking these? Like she's, she's yes. fully re-recording, re re bro. Yes. Taylor oh, wow. Swift That's, literally got God Kendrick bless, Lamar. She, Taylor Swift was able to get Kendrick Lamar to re-record the remix of "Bad Blood," the mm. same old verse. I've yep. heard that. Track. Do it again. With new vocals, even Kanye, wow. Kanye. No one doing can this. do that. Only Taylor Swift can make yeah. that shit happen. You think Kendrick Lamar cares about an old verse? 
Taylor Swift can make that happen, though. But this is my point, Vic. I respect that. If she threw all her fucking albums on a streaming service and charged three bucks for you to have it, nigga, she's up. Nigga, I would pay the three bucks just three to bucks support her. Why are you lying, bro? Nigga, who? Three bucks? Not a month. A month? I don't know about a month. Exactly. I'll pay a, I'll pay a year. <laughs> do, do the math. Nigga, give me a free trial. That's $36. It's $36. Give me a promo code, nigga. The give me a fuck? promo Make code. Work. It's crazy. <laughs> Make that shit work. You know what I'm saying? Um, she gotta give us something. I, I, uh, one of my biggest um, TikToks that we made was the talking about uh, Taylor Swift's. Who was it? Tour? I think it was a tour numbers. Mm-hmm. That, that shit got that shit went viral. I think on YouTube it went because viral. Because Ticketmaster was in a whole scandal that they were overcharging people, and then they went into Congress. <clears> and and we called that shit. We spoke about that. You know, so Taylor Swift. You know, share, nah, we, share some of that bread over here, we maybe. Fu- we fuck with you, Taylor. We fuck with you for real. Um, <clears throat> moving we, on we though. Neighbors. With a what you say? We neighbors. Yeah, we neighbors. We technically are. Neighbors. <laughs> That's a good one. One girl we might not be fucking with that much right now. Uh. Glorilla. Mm. What happened now? Glow, Glorilla, might be ruining her own career. Mm. Last week she dropped Cha Cha Cha. No, no, no. Last month Cha Cha Cha. I was gonna say I was not last week. That song was not good. Mm. It sampled, arguably. Nas's worst song, Uchi Wally of all time. I like that beat. Nas's most criticized song of all time. Mm. So on top of that, you got a bad sample, and then you got this. You make a bad. She blocked Kai Sinat because of this, mm-hmm. right? Hey, but did she block us? Not yet. I have to check. She might have okay. already. But remember, we said that Kai Sinat and Glorilla were flirting months before. Like in May, back in May, if those are, for, if you don't remember, back in May, Kai Sinet and Glorilla were actually flirting on Instagram Live. She twerked for him. Mm-hmm. They were flirting back and forth. Shook that big ass. So yeah. I think she personally might have liked Kai. You know, it was more personal. And on top of that, he didn't like the song. So she felt, okay, let me block him. But guess what now? We have Glorilla now tweeting saying that she might unblock Kai. She, she tried to apologize to Kai, being fake, right? And then Kai said the same thing that she said. Oh, no. You made your bed. You made your bed there. Gotta, gotta lay there, right? And then now we have Glorilla on Instagram Live with her friends in the car. Making threats. Making threats. Threatening Kai Sinet's life. What academics call them? Over, over a opinion about a song that everyone online doesn't like. It's not like he just doesn't... It's a bad song. It's okay. It's a, it's a song. Hey, baby, you're a millionaire. You can get any producer you want. Stop it. Move to the next one. Make another one. Why are you focus on this one? Record labels are paying Kai Sinet to promote your music. He's not taking the money. But guess what? Those posts that they post on Academics' page and all these blogs, they're paying for that. So if the academics, every time academics post Kai Sinet reacting to a song, it's a record label paying him. Academics said it. So Glorilla's record label paid him to post Kai Sinet's reaction or anyone's reaction to it, even if it's bad or good. So she's just looking hypocritical. She's cutting ties with record labels. People are not going to want to work with her. It's becoming very bitter. You are too young of an artist to be doing this type of shit. No one, it's okay to make a song that's not it. Move on to the next one. You, you can make another one. You were on top of your game last year. You were the hottest female artist in the world last year. This year, you're not number one, but you're around there. You're top three, still top four. You're around there. Sexy Red, though, blew everyone out the fucking water. Sexy Red sexy Red's f- fucked everyone up, right? Who would have fucking thought? I don't know. She fucked everyone up. That sexy baby, oh, rich baby daddy shit. Number one song on, on TikTok right now. It's probably going to be number one. After Taylor Swift this week, next week is probably going to be number one in the country. It's like I, going like this now, the, the sexy red song on Drake's album. I need a rich baby daddy. You know? So, Glorilla, we're going to play the clips right here. Very, very unfortunate. I, I, we already were, I was pissed off last week. Now this made me more pissed off. Because I'm like, okay. This is like, it's getting to this point. What the fuck is going on? Yo, Vic is hurting, bro. <laughs> I'm tight. Yeah, I'm tight. I don't like when niggas is fake, bro. Like, this is a fake industry bullshit that people call out. Like, this is whack, man. I'm drunk as fuck right now. I might fuck around and unblock Kai. She tweeted this October 28th. Kai saw this live right away. From jail. He said. From jail no, is crazy. Glorilla. 
Oh, shit. He... You laid your bed. You better stay there. Oh. <laughs> You made your bed, you better stay there. And then we have Glorilla with people in a car driving around on IG Live saying that they're going to find whatever jail he's at and stab him. As academics said, her hired Memphis goons. That was very funny to me. <laughs> he said, you hired Memphis security goons making threats on IG Live. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, academics was tweaking yesterday and today, bro. bro you saw what he said about Jay Critch? Yeah, that was crazy. He said, he said you're going to have to buy a ticket to see me at Rolling Loud because your ass ain't performing, nigga. <laughs> Yo, but Acme Ac Ac doing mad uh, scoops on niggas. So he, he low key is playing it nice. But to be honest. You heard about the new the dirt he got on her? He has a lot of stuff. Bro. I guess she got arrested for something. A for cereal. She's still stealing cereal, bro. She stole cereal. <laughs> Glorilla stole cereal and got arrested. This was on yeah, Funny she, Marco's interview. She said it, yeah. Like a year ago. And then she was like, I think she kind of had beef with Funny Marco after that interview because she kind of didn't like how it came off. Something like that, too. And they kind of squashed it, I think. <laughs> what type of cereal she stole? <laughs> <laughs> what type of cereal would you steal? Think about it. I'm hungry for Cocoa Puffs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, don't, I might steal some, I don't know, Raisin Bran. What? What? Who the fuck they is give raising that shit out for free, nigga? That's for old what niggas. Fuck you talking about, nigga? Do you, well, nah, bro. Hold on. What's good with your fucking bro, gold bladder, nigga? That you need a fucking fuck? raisin brand, bro. That's just delicious. So. Nah, nigga. <laughs> nah, bro. Nah, nigga. What's good with you? Gonna steal something they give out for free, free. nigga? Yeah, that's what, what the they give to senior citizens, about? bro. Bro, nah, you really bro, eat raisin bread, bro? Going to school nah, nah, breakfast? stop. Do you really eat raisin bread, nigga? Say it right now. Why you coming at me like I like I said like a threat or something? He eats that he shit, eats bro. It. He eats that shit. That's he crazy, Raisin bro. Bran is on your side. That's not even the commercial music. <laughs> that's that's Steve Farr. <laughs> he eats it, bro. Nah, bro. That's raisin nationwide, Bran? Nigga, nationwide. He eats it, nigga. Do you eat it with the raisins? Let's play the Kai clip. Motherfucker nigga. loves raisins, bro. Oh, this, no, is, this is this Kai. This nasty. That's why he used to go to the bathroom. Kai in jail talking about Glorilla again. You just be shitting, huh? I don't do all that. Oh, I love music and she real. I don't do that. I, I love music. He did. He did like her, her Memphis accent. I love music. <laughs> I love Yo, music. he's wildin'. We got Ice Spice over here. Nicki Minaj over here. Jay Z over here. And Jay Z. You the second Memphis as a celly. This is for those who don't know. That's Brendan in the cell with him. That's the guy that she also blocked. Remember we talked about she blocked a meme guy or something mm -hmm. for supporting Kai. Yeah. That's the guy. He's the one that does all the memes with Drake, uh, the skits with Drake and um, Drewski. Drewski's um close friend, Brendan. Oh, here we go. That's a here we go. Bro. Guess whose fault it is again? Glorilla, bro. Glorilla. Yo, guys. I don't know. Yo, God, he's behind her, but to to the point that is like. Wait, Yo, God, she signed on the Yo, God. She signed on Yo, God. So that's what people are saying. Like, you know, Memphis, be careful. Act and Memphis people are real. Niggas is real. But it's like I don't think they're gonna. Why would they hurt academics over his opinion over music? He's gonna come at her because she's coming at him. Street niggas are not driving across the country to kill someone. Nah, no, bro, no like, it's that, not bro. that deep. It's your problem. I don't do all that. Oh, I love music and she real. I don't do that. Fuck. We got Ice Spice over here, Nicki Minaj over here, Jay Z over here. Why are you counting the money like that? You the second Memphis as a celly. Yesterday I had Chopper, now I got you. What's up with y'all Memphis, bro? I'm with the same person who got blocked by Glorilla too. You got blocked by Glorilla from defending me. You got me blocked. You, you defended me. So look, 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 thing one and thing two. You made bad, you better lay there. You might lighter. You better stay there. They know what they did. Hit the cha cha cha. Now hit the cha cha is bad, disrespectful. <laughs> so look at the, the threats right here. See me on the street so in this behind the sale German. Now one of them. Now one of them. Behind bars ain't saving you, nigga. Fuck you, time out, boy. Walk them down in the sale. Walk them down in the sale. Now let a nigga find out what jail you bitches in. Come on now. Come Hope on now. Nigga. Nigga, place your order. Place your order, nigga. What kind of poker you want? I was gonna die about this shit for free. Imagine what I do for that money, nigga. That money on that. Hey, girl. Come on, <laughs>
That's wild. You want to know why that what makes me mad? What the hell is going on? You what is why? going on? Nah. And then she's... Does she know that Kai is not in a real jail? Does she Does she not know that either? No, I think he is in a real jail. But he's like not... A discontinued jail. But he's not... Yeah, no, probably... probably was. I feel like that's one that they use for movies. Yeah, I'm hearing probably. that's in LA. So yeah. it's probably one of the movie set ones. It reminds me of that show, the 50 Cent show that he had where they were in jail. I forgot what it's called. With that incarcerated guy that became like a lawyer. I know what you're talking about. I think that that's what that's it looks like the same set, so that's probably where they're filming it. But it's not it's not a real active jail, and it's not like he's actually really in jail. It's not like you have to find what jail you're at. Like, let me pull up the jail and like she's making it seem like Kaisen that's been arrested and he's actually in prison, and she's gonna find out what prison he's at. Gonna su- pick your poker, like pick what knife I'm gonna stab you with. Talking about I was willing to die for for free. Now imagine for money I'm willing to die. No, no one needs to die. Just keep releasing music. Keep making better music. Make a better song. Don't, don't kill no one. No, no one needs to die. Like, what the? F- I know artists are passionate about their fucking art, but to kill someone because they don't agree with it, and then you can't get mad at his response because you want to be drunk and unblock him and tweet about it. Do it. Unblock him. Why are you tweeting that you're going to unblock him? Unblock him or not. Don't make it a whole thing. Hit him up. Like you posting about it. It's kind of corny. Like you cloud chasing. And then he responds to you the same way you responded to him. And then you mad. Hypocrisy. It's hypocrisy. Let's blame the drugs. Let's, let's say she was drunk. You know, maybe she's going to get some sober. What's it called? Sober clarity? Or whatever the shit's called. I hope so because, yo, Glorilla, that's cool that you feel that way because you're in Memphis with your goons. But... If you know Kai Sinet early, Kai Sinet used to have them drill niggas on that fucking, on those Twitch streams. I remember when he had them drill niggas on that Twitch oh, stream. Early New York Twitch? Early New York Twitch, Kai Sinet was really with the shits. He was with them niggas. Bro, the state of New York loves him. So when you go back to New York, what do you expect is going to happen to you? Like, why are you fueling a situation that you're not willing to see all the way through? Like, this is the corny shit we're talking about. It's whack as fuck. For fucking views on I, for Twitter, you're going to create a situation that can get so much worse. Because you know these young niggas, bro. They hear Glorilla's in town. Yo, she's talking shit about Kai. Niggas love Kai. Let's go dump her shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Let's just dump it on her. Like, what's wrong with you, bro? Why would you cause that? Like, why would you create a situation like that just to get a fucking moment? Because your song is fucking ass. <laughs> It's fucking trash. You can't even chop chop prop. Nah, bro. I mean, I that shit pissed me off. Listen, you can't hit a home run every fucking time. It's okay to drop trash. You ever heard drunk and hot girls? Kanye West made that. You know what happens? That people, shit was ass. People, people, it happens with people. You know, yeah. is this a no? The Keith Lee. We could talk about Keith Lee situation before we get into this. Make this the last topic. Say that again. We're gonna talk about Kodak. Yeah, yeah real quick. <laughs> So, um, oh, real quick. Also, how do you guys feel about, so Kai Sinet is doing a live stream from jail. There's a lot of people calling him out saying that he is glorifying jail, black men being in jail, incarcerated, when incarceration shouldn't be glorified. And also, incarceration is something that we need to condemn the mass incarceration, the injustice that's happening in these jail systems. We need to call for prison reform rather than to make content around the prisons. But there's hypocrisies being seen. For example, Carlos Miller from Wild and Out, famous comedian, hilarious guy, 85 South Show. He called Kai Sinet out, but Carlos Miller, uh, Miller, Miller actually did some skits. Carlos did some skits in a jail cell with Desi Banks, Atlanta, Atlanta comedian's viral skit. They've done skits in jail cells. So he's like, oh, but I didn't sleep there. I didn't stay there. I didn't stream there for seven days. Uh, but still, seven day stream is basically a seven day skit. Kaisen is bringing Drewski. I think tonight's Krishan's going. Every single day, there's new people. The Drewski shit was hilarious. Like, Drewski got that jumped. Was it was so like a prison funny. riot, right? Where's my inhaler? You know, I see both sides where I agree. This is something about it feels wrong. Like, mm, like we shouldn't be like applauding people being in prison. But at the same time, it's entertainment, you know? And that's all he's trying to do is entertain people. But then is it fucked up that the entertainment is at the mercy of these people being in a fake jail, right? He probably paid to rent this out. He could do whatever the fuck he wants with his money, right? I'm pretty sure that's what it was. It seems to be very organized. You know, it seems like he's not really on his phone. Like he's like very disconnected. Like he's on lockdown for real. Like he's disconnected. Like people kind of update him, you know, people working there. 
But it's a, it's a pretty well-structured situation. It seems like um, cameras everywhere. It's insane. The setup is, is high level. Um, so I commend him for the setup. It's pretty professional done. But what do you think? Like, you know, should he have started in a college? Should he have done a seven-day stream in a college dorm? Should he have done, you know... I do feel like there's a lot of other ideas he could have done. Doesn't mean he's not going to do them yet. Hopefully he does them. You know? Um... I think when it comes to the whole concept of doing like jail content, if you actually watch the stream, it's yeah. funny. Like some of it's actually really funny. But I also I'm right. I, I agree with you. Like I cringed a little bit because I'm like, yo, you're portraying people of color in such a nasty, disgusting way, and you're presenting prison culture in such a glorified way. Like it's not fun. I know people who have heart um, pacers because they have heart conditions. They got in jail. I have friends who make collect calls in front of me to their friends who are in jail. It is not a fun experience. It's a horrible reality. And I am a full believer that we should abolish all prisons because they don't re really don't rehabilitate. Yeah, they don't do their job. At all. My sister does um, restorative justice work. I fully understand that the prison system designed... It's, it's a system of violence, slavery, and revenge. It's never been about rehabilitation or justice. So I think if Kai Sinet is going to do this and make humor on our reality and what we, how we act and what we're like... He should also be donating the streams, the money he makes off the streams, to the causes that are trying to improve the prisons. Don't just use it as a joke. Also try to like make it a better situation for people. Yeah, because I do see it where it's like some of those are like oh Danny we had in here saying like the idea of like the influence you have on young kids is true. Yeah. Kai Sinet doing the stream going viral for seven days from jail and prison is gonna make it seem to some kids, maybe you don't know how many. But it's definitely going to make it seem to kids that he influences who are following him that jail is fun. Jail is is cool. Or jail, oh, mom, I want to go to jail. Like, I should go to prison. Like, it's, it's, it's a fun, satirical thing when it shouldn't be the case. Now, is he doing this for Halloween? Is that the the cut? Like, what is, you know, yeah, someone needs random. to ask him what's his perspective. It depends. What is Kai's actual motives? It might be deeper than we realize. We could be wrong. Maybe he is donating money to prison reform. You know, we don't know the full story. So we still have to wait for that. But as of right now, I'm not mad at people getting mad at him because this shit looks weird. It feels weird. I'm looking at that shit. I'm like laughing. But then I'm like, after the laugh, I'm like, hmm, this yeah. feels weird. What the fuck? It's kind of weird, bro. Like, like what's going on? Like, wait a minute. Ugh, ugh, it's kind of. And it's all black. It might be some white man. I didn't see no white man. It looked like all black men to me. You know, so it's like, ah, oh, man. They have mad Mexican niggas. <laughs> <laughs> My God. Orale, pues. Um, that shit looked crazy, man. God bless. Um, Keith Lee. Keith Lee has been known as the most famous food reviewer. The most famous food reviewer in this generation's recent times is Keith Lee. So much influence that wherever he goes, he gets a special treatment. So Keith Lee has been in Atlanta, visiting Atlanta restaurants. Supporting black businesses. What's he doing? He's sending his family members inside to avoid special treatment. Now, what happens is he's been calling out certain restaurants for the mistreatment. What had they been doing? Whenever he sends his family members inside, they tell them, oh, no, there's a wait time. There's wait periods. There's no tables. Right. Also, a lot of times there's a line of people outside waiting or inside waiting. Regular people. But Keith Lee walks in. Oh, wait, we got a table for you ready. He ends up leaving. He, he's like, no, it's fine. Because he wants equal treatment. He feels that the special treatment is unjust because it's just, a, it's just showing how lazy these restaurants in Atlanta can be. And there's people in Atlanta that live in Atlanta in the comments supporting Keith Lee saying, yes, I've been there. That place is just lazy. They don't want to fucking work. That's all it is. Yes, 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 right? Now, there's also people saying what Keith Lee is doing is bad for the businesses. Oh, no, he's, he's only showing the bad side. He's not supporting properly his own people. This is bad. He's black. He's supposed to be actually uplifting the black culture. I think he's just being fucking honest and realistic. Honesty and realism is all we, sh we should strive for and authentic authenticity. You know what I'm saying? Like, why anything else? But people are up in matters and up uproaring. What's your opinion about the Keith Lee? Um, I believe that...
people should stop being upset, that he's frustrated that people are treating him differently. I think Keith Lee wants to show us what it feels like to go to these restaurants and to actually experience these things. I think him doing this in Atlanta has showed me a lot. Black elitism is a very real concept. There are a lot of people of color who think they're hot fucking shit because they have money. Perfect example, Keith Lee does the review on one of the restaurants. And what do they do? They do a video where they're like, who's Keith Lee? And then they write this whole paragraph about how much they respect Keith Lee, but, you know, and that they thank him for not trashing the business, but they do everything with love and respect. Yo, you have to stop acting like pompous pieces of shit because you have money and you have success. You don't get to treat people that way. And I think Keith Lee is just showing that there's just an egregious elitism in a lot of these businesses, especially in businesses owned by people of color. Mm -hmm. Because just because he's famous does not mean he gets to skip the line. We have to dead that status quo, and that's what he's trying to do. Like he's telling us, I want, I don't want to participate in this. 100%. It's wrong. 100%. If you have a certain hours, uh, your restaurant has hours and people visit it, you should be able to get proper attendance, not just because you're not Keith Lee. Now, if you happen to be Keith Lee... You get that special treatment. That's crazy. Now, imagine if you're not just Keith Lee. You're in Atlanta, and you're an Atlanta celebrity. Oh, so now it's like a s exclusive only celebrities get this special treatment? It's pretty whack. It's pretty whack. Like, this, it should be more equaled out, more balanced. Obviously, people are going to get their special treatment. Rightfully so. It is what it is. If I owned a restaurant, I would give people special treatment if they're more important, right? Or more popular, right? Because it's going to give you more notoriety as a restaurant. But not to the extent where you're going to literally fake and lie to like everyone that's already outside waiting and this and that and like you know no one's gonna benefit from, from that because you're only gonna be called out people are gonna call you fake like this keith lee situation has now exposed a lot of businesses so i would say these businesses does just need to restructure themselves prioritize customer service rather than just like oh we make food and like you get it when you get it customer service should be on top because customer service is the number one thing of all businesses the higher the customer service rate is, the more people are going to come back. The more long-term businesses you have, the more actual long relationships and like support, longevity last. So customer service should be up high. I think that's what Keith Lee is basically is trying to say to people, remind people, but they're trying to make it a whole thing and like trying to like, you know, call him out, etc. I've never seen that man raise his voice once. Ever. He's the, he's, most the most, he's the most monotone person in the world. Mm -hmm. He does a lot of shit for free. The majority of his shit he does is for free. He doesn't get he doesn't get paid to do reviews. This man is the definition of what a human being right now in content creation should be. Authenticity, himself, just grabs his phone, records, no special editing, all raw, authentic. And it works. Because people just like him as a person. So let me ask you a question, Vic. Would you rather destroy someone's business or lie I would rather him um, well destroy in one sense he tells the truth about the business and it costs the business their existence listen I would I would rather that happen than um, him lying because him lying but lying in what extent it would be like him lying just like saying about the quality of the food taking money to do reviews like doing things that are just yeah, yeah, yeah. no I would definitely have I'd rather the business because if you are if you're not prepared if your business is not prepared to handle such criticism of a Keith Lee then maybe you shouldn't be having a restaurant at all thank you because why are you like do you not know what it, what it takes to run a restaurant like are you kidding me this is like the hardest industry to just start up in like this is not overnight successes this is not that's not what it is and you didn't take the review and restructure Exactly. Like you need to take constructive criticism and work on it and get better. Thank you. There's there's you know how many restaurants out here in Rhode Island during a pandemic shut down that've been around for decades? They've been around for decades. They shut down. Why? Because the restaurant business is not easy. It's extremely difficult, let alone during a pandemic. Therefore, if you get into this industry, you have to realize that you have to be prepared to take the punches and roll with them. These people now they're looking like hypocrites. And who knows? If the food's banging though. They might still survive. You know, I forgot what that place called, Milk and Honey, something like that. Like mm -hmm. the specific main one. We shall see, though. That's the Keith Lee situation. I support Keith Lee. What's it called? Protect Keith Lee at all costs over here. That's how I feel like. That is a UFC fighter. He's going to protect himself. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, he'll, he'll beat anyone up. He doesn't <laughs> need our protection. Um, last topic of the day. 21 Savage and Kodak Black have gone back and forth. They have an online beef currently right now. For those who don't remember, when 21 Savage released the Her Lost album with Drake... 
Kodak Black felt salty because Drake allegedly promised him a collab album, but instead he dropped one with 21 Savage. And then Kodak Black at the time was saying that, you know, he didn't like that. And then 21 Savage said that randomly at that same time, he was talking about it around that same time, 21 Savage said that he was better than everyone on the XXL, uh, XXL freshman that. list yep. that the year that he was on, yep. which included Kodak Black. So mm -hmm. Kodak Black felt slighted. Damn, you're talking about being better than me on the list. And also you had this album with Drake and I thought Drake was going to do one with me. So Kodak felt some type of way. Kodak went on now, Drink Champs, currently, and said this, where he called out 21 Savage. But if we're being honest, and we're going to talk about a little bit about that as well, Kodak Black should not be interviewed right now if he's high as a kite. Like, I don't know why Nori let this shit just happen. This yeah. man was high as fuck. Nori's becoming very problematic. Man. And he's... Because people already come high and you add drugs to it. I mean, not drugs, you add alcohol, which is a drug. Um, but you add alcohol to the to the formula. Oof. Look at this man right here. Mr. Halloween himself, Kill Bill. One of my favorite rappers of all time, by the way, Kodak Black. Through all this controversy, <laughs> the way I love this man's music is insane. Agree. Do you have to say future? 21 Savage. Look at his face, <laughs> The black guy cut 20, 21 used to, be, used to be straight. I said that we were vibing on the SG twice type shit. I'm saying, I'm like, you supposed to be sniper gang, slaughter gang, sniper gang, sniper gang, whatever. Sniper gang, sniper gang, that makes sense. You know, you had the same initials, SG, SG. That was fucked or whatever. I'm saying, but I ain't gonna lie, I, I remember a point in time, like, the shit was fucked up about me. Like, on some shit, like, they're true to last, so I'm not really shit like that. Like, bro, stay on, like, all that good shit. I don't know what the fuck he said there. I don't, I don't know what the fuck he said there. Like, Yo, Florida niggas talk crazy. <laughs> listen, listen. Yeah, all that other shit. Yeah. And then, I don't, I don't know, like, I'm saying, Drake, Drake just got a certain, like, a uh, little effect that he do to motherfuckers and shit. Cause like after, after, after the album they did it together and shit like that, it was just like all of a sudden motherfuckers just felt like you know what I'm saying they ain't oh, doing that pussy ass shit like that is some shit like you made this shit like you like you vocalize it for real for real on the ground and on the internet like you ain't never live like that I mean like on no shit. Uh, you get the gist. You know what I'm saying? Kodak is a man of few words and many noises. I don't think we got shit from that. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of understood half of it. It's a man of, of, of few words, but many noises. Kodak Black, a man of few words, many noises. Um, he's like, that nigga uh, sound like he was eating peanut butter half the time. <laughs> no, Bush is struggling to get the shit off the roof. Right Sorry for your ears out there if you're listening. Um, oh, my God. That was not bro. us. That was um Florida man, Kodak Black. Um, Them Florida jits are different. 21 Savage's um, response. I think he did. He tweeted something, I think, too. Yeah, it was so like cap. Yeah, he did tweet cap emojis. That was his first reaction. A bunch of cap emojis to what Kodak Black said. And then he went on to actually respond with a video response, vocalizing his opinion on the entire situation. And to be honest, it shows that it definitely bothered him because 21 Savage doesn't speak up much about shit. He hasn't really said shit in months. He's just been on tour with Drake, chilling, living his best life. But I guess he's off tour now. He got time. To speak. Future is a way bigger artist than me. Future been making hits forever and ever and ever. When they ask you, Future 21, all you had to do was say Future. That's all. Like, why the hell are you always dragging shit, trying to make it seem like we got a problem or it's just deeper than what the fuck it is, bro? It ain't nothing, bro. Let it go. Like, make your money. You free now. We all go through shit. You always trying to bring up the fact that you went to jail and shit. Like, like, that shit just mean like you deserve more than the next Whoever went to jail, this is what I want y'all to know. Just cause you went to jail, the world don't owe you nothing, bro. Like, don't know about you don't deserve more than anybody else because you went to jail. Every nigga go through shit, bro. Straight up. Everybody go through problems. Everybody have problems in life. Y'all not acting like the world owe y'all uh, some shit cause y'all went to jail, gang. Like, what the fuck be wrong with y'all? Alright, cool. I 21 Savage is right. Kodak Black needs to get over it. It's not that serious, and I think it's it's embarrassing, like in a sense where it's like you're dragging an old situation, you know, you're making it a whole thing. Now twenty one is responding. Now it's another thing, and then the Kodak's probably gonna go keep going back and forth. Why? You guys are from the same fucking class. You guys are both, you know, great artists in your own rights. You both have hits. You both are successful. You both have fan bases. Let's just let that shit go. Let that shit go. And if 21 
No, no. If Kodak wants a serious talk, reach out to 21. Talk about it. You seem emotional about it. Go fucking talk to him. Now, what I don't like is the Drink Champs interview with Kodak Black. Kodak Black seems to be on drugs, actually under the influence, while on the Drink Champs interview, then proceeds to, you know, I believe, drink more like the Drink Champs do. Drink with the Drink Champs. Get drunker. Mix with his already intoxicated, drug-induced body. And keep on talking, more nonsense, mumbling, slurring words. It's coming off as if we are platforming a drug addict in midst of his actual addiction while being addicted on camera. We're just letting, like, it's for entertainment. That should not be the case. Nori should have edited a lot of stuff out or Nori should have stopped the interview. Should have been like, hey, hold up. Let me look back at this. It's funny because it's Kodak Black. But remove the fact that he's famous and we love his music. That's just a human being that is under under the influence of drugs. He's addicted and he needs our help. But instead, people look at it from the perspective of like, nah, it's just, you know, it is what it is. I saw someone debate, which is a good a point. I get that point where they were like, um, well, people used to interview Rick James years ago, years ago. And Rick James was off of every drug in the world, high as a kite, doing interviews. That is a good point, right? But uh, there's still a difference to me where it's like Rick James, those interviews were like five minutes long. It was quick, off the cuff. We're talking about sitting down. I think it was a three-hour interview with Kodak on yeah, Drink Champs. I agree. Three hours of him being high. Mm -hmm. You know, I think there's a difference there. You know, and especially if we're doing our culture, those Rick James interviews were with white women, Katie Couric, like white anchors, famous anchors, legendary anchors, but white women, they weren't of the black culture, representing the black culture like how Nori does. His whole thing is about holding legends down giving them their flowers if we're doing shit like this platforming kodak while he's high while he's addicted to drugs we're preventing him from even becoming a legend you know we might actually ex ex uh expedite the process of him unfortunately maybe dying young like and then what making him a legend like what are we trying to do here like this shouldn't be that's not okay like kodak black literally has songs rapping about being addicted to Percocets, doing heroin. I'm on that heroin. I'm on that heroin. Literally talk about he does heroin. And then people are like ignoring it. Oh, it's just music. It's just an interview. No. He needs help. Get him some help. We said that shit about Juice World. Juice World kept rapping about, I'm on drugs. I want to die. Juice World died. From drugs, when is enough enough? Seems to be like this day and age, there's no ceiling. There's like no limit. This shit just goes like that. It just keeps going. You know, I don't know how much clout one man can have, but it's not worth it. It's not worth it. Any thoughts to close it out, Noah? Um, so first one is that um, I agree with you. I think um, he should have definitely hit up 21. I think this is how rep, uh, how relationships are destroyed and how we're robbed of good music when artists start to argue with each other through subliminals or just on the internet and they don't hit each other up and just have a conversation and put their pride aside. But, you know, a lot of artists are sensitive. Glorilla is a perfect example. And there's so many more of that. They just can't accept criticism. They can't accept reality. I think the fact that 21 got that Drake collab album pissed Kodak off because Kodak was getting way more hits than 21 Savage. Kodak was on top of the world before he went to jail. And even when he got out, he was still making hits. And I think he just got frustrated by that. Um, when it comes to Nori, yo, I'm literally going to start. I'm like at this point of categorizing Nori in the same category. I put Adam 22. I put Vlad Damn. TV. Sorry. I put Vlad TV. I put academics. Because despite popular belief, I know some people like academics. He literally just trashes women. Like, that is his bread and butter, is discussing women. And sometimes I'd be like, bro, you're talking insane right now, but whatever. Yeah, he doubles down a lot on... On women, like, issues relating to women. Yeah. And he was doing it with Glorilla, and it really did, like, make me uncomfortable. And it, he's done that a lot. But when he did it with Christian Teigen, like, he he teased off. He lost his job. Well, did he? Did he, 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 lost, he, he, he got lost suspended his because of that, I think, on Complex. And Twitch. He got suspended yes. on Twitch for uh, his Christian channel Teigen. got taken down. That's very true. So... I'm putting Nori there because 
with those with that group of people what you're doing is you're perpetuating a culture that is just toxic it's negative and it doesn't contribute anything um i put these people in the category because they keep platforming people that are presenting the worst of humanity mm -hmm. um and that's why i agree with you vic and it frustrates me because yo all we talk about is positivity all people put on their fucking social media, on Twitter, oh, I want to be positive, I want to be around positive things, I'm tired of negativity. That's all we fucking consume, bro. Mm -hmm. Yo, my nigga, I went on Twitter today, and I'm watching act just trash person after person. I'm watching 21 Beef with fucking Kodak. I'm watching Nori platform a fucking drug addict in an intoxicated state as if there's no fucking problem. Yo... At some point, you have to kind of sit there and be like, do we really actually want the things we're saying we want? Or are we just saying it because it's cool to say? It's cool to say you want to be positive. It's cool to say you want to live a better life. But all we do is surround ourselves and all we do is consume this toxic ass shit. And it's just so exhausting to have to see it every fucking day. We're becoming numb to it. Literally numb to it. It's, 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 a, it's a numbing society that we're living in right now where, you know, if... You were to be born today, 25 years old, first day on life as an adult, no social media, no phone, and then we were brand new to it, and we just the first things we see is everything that we see every day. You'd lose your mind. We would go crazy. We'd be like, what the fuck is this? What are humans doing? What the fuck is... Americans, what's going on? What, is, what the fuck is... What the, is this? This is not okay? Is this okay? But instead, it's all a form or facet of entertainment, you know? But that's why... Platforms like this exist, and we're here to, you know, cause that that actual delineation between the bullshit and the truth, and cover and discuss it here. Even though we're definitely gonna have our moments of some bullshit and some cap, because you know that's what it's literally called cap. So we're gonna be capping on here. But um, yeah, comment down below. How do you guys feel about all these topics we discussed today? That's the episode for today. Cap. Club Ambition Podcast, episode 108. We appreciate you. And if you're here to check out the Danny interview, make sure to check it out. It's in the timestamps. But that's the topics for today. That's the news coverage. Next week, we're going to be back again with a lot of more topics to discuss. Interesting, maybe special guests. We shall see. But we appreciate you guys. Subscribe, comment down below. Smash that like button. Share with your friends and family. Rhode Island to the world. Province to the world. PBD to the world. We are here. Shout out to everybody out there in the world watching Club Ambition Podcast Cap. Rhode Island's popular, most popular podcast you already know. We are here. We had to bring this gentleman on the platform. Their mutual friends reached out a lot, and for good reason. They've been making a lot of sound and a lot of movement in the city. Specifically, I've been seeing it, especially in, I feel like, in the past month. He's going to talk about us, t talk about it with us, how, you know, when did he start doing stuff, but with kids specifically, going to schools, you know, doing a lot of crowd movement, TikToks with kids, and then people would send it to me, maybe mutual friends that might have kids in these crowds and stuff, and be like, oh, what's going on? You guys check this out? Yeah, it's happening in Rhode Island. And it's it's been one of the most viral pieces. I've seen, like, some someone tweet, I think uh, it was last month, it might have been Corva, you know, Corva, uh, one of our mutual friends, Corva was like, um, you know, I think the most famous person in Rhode Island right now is that security uh, dancing kid, you know, and I was like, oh, damn, it's a good point, because, like, it stands out, like, the security guard, outfit-wearing, dancer, and yeah, he happens to be from Rhode Island, so we have him in the building. He's gonna go with his his proper introduction, but we know him as Tropicana Danny. Welcome to the studio, brother. Appreciate you. Thank you for having me over. No problem. Um, my name is Tropicana Danny. Everyone knows me as the Providence Place Mall security guard. Um, I've been working in that mall basically for like a year, probably like three months. Really. So I thought it was longer than that. Nah, just so I came from Florida. Okay. I was living in Florida. I, I moved out of uh, Rhode Island and after I graduated high school. So I graduated PCTA 2019. Then I moved to New York City. Okay. And then uh, from there, I pretty much, you know, did my thing. COVID happened, moved to Florida. And then Florida was just, it was too boring. Yeah. You know, I, I got in trouble. I got like citations and stuff for dancing in the streets, having huge crowds in Orlando. Mm -hmm. um, I ended up just moving back. Um. And I felt like something had to be done, a different, like, change, you know. So I worked inside the mall. I got tired of, like, just working. So there was one day, there was kids, probably, like, a group of, like, 17 kids. Yeah. They weren't listening. They were juveniles getting kicked out of the mall. None of them wanted to listen. And I'm like, you know, I, I got it. I'll take care of it. So I go downstairs, and I tell these kids, I'm like, yo, if 
I get sturdy, you guys got to all leave. They're like, oh, you can't get sturdy, this and that, da, da, da. I'm like, okay. So I put my phone down, put it on the floor. And then from there, you know, I let them play whatever music. There was a whole bunch of people. There was parents stuff. Everyone watching. And um, so, I, you know, I did a flip, did my sturdy stuff. The next day, literally in just one night, that was my first video I posted on TikTok. It hit over 1.4 mil. Wow. And so I came in the next day. You know, a lot of people from there on knew exactly like, oh, yeah, you're that guy from TikTok. And uh, I got written up for it. I got in trouble for it. Other jobs, was, yeah. Yeah, and basically from there on, a lot of kids started coming up to me and stuff, asking for videos, pictures, stuff like that. Um, wow. And so I got warned not to wear, like, you know, the shirt. And so I went to Jer No, I went to New York, and then I went to Jersey. There was famous TikTokers who reached out to me. One of them turned out to be Cardi B's nephew. Mm. Um, a lot of people know him as Jody. Um, but he hit me up. We went to American Dream Mall. The mall already knew who I was. They let us do our videos there. Um, we did like a promotion. And from there, that was the day I pretty much lost my job. Um, I had to go in for like 11 p.m. And I was like, there's no way I'm driving from Jersey all the way back to Providence. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm taking the opportunity. Um, and then from there, basically we're here today, nine months wow. on TikTok. Um, and then only five months on Instagram just dancing. Wow. So I reached... Uh, a lot of people. I have uh, DJ Cabeza. It's basically my management right there. And nice. my wife right here. Nice. So, yeah. And when it comes to you, how old are you now? 23. 23. Wow. So, you were born and raised in Providence as well? Born and raised. I uh, lived all around Rhode Island, uh, Providence. But nice. Mainly the South Side. South Side. Okay, nice, yeah. nice. Wow, 23 years old. So, then now, uh, when it comes to your idea, or not the idea, but just the history of dancing... When did you start dancing? Like, what made you want to even dance in general? Was it something you kind of picked up now, you know, in your 20s? Or was it something that growing up you always were passionate? Like, you looked up to dancers, you danced a lot, you know, you were a Chris Brown fan. You know, that's like the stereotypical story. A lot of people, like, look up to Chris Brown for, for that or even Michael Jackson. But what's your story? What's the Tropicana story when it comes to why you even dance? Um, So, dancing has always been, like, a thing. My mom, my dad, they were big dancers. Dominican? Um, Dominican. Okay. Yeah, so... I'm a little bit of a mix, but my mom, I basically, you know, she raised me and all my siblings, seven kids nice. by wow. herself. So wow. um, I kind of got like, you know, a, a bit of a gist from her. And then um, by the time I was 15, you know, I was uh, out in the streets, you know, just doing whatever I did, like parkour. So that's how I learned all my flips and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, I pretty much just got into like the b-boy world. You know, um, so I started getting with a couple of, like, crews or whatever, uh, Project 401. I don't know if you ever heard of them. It sounds familiar, yeah. Um, but they, they work with, like, the city and stuff like that. Um, but I basically, you know, I started doing stuff like that, 15 years old. Uh, from there on, I just, you know, lived in New York City. I ended up being homeless. I was sleeping in the trains. My family was all in Florida. And um, I just chose to stay there, you know, even though I had a home in Florida. But I, I just felt like I belonged in New York City, so... I basically slept on a chain, had a like you know like a duffel bag, yeah. Um, and I basically work like from ten, ten in the morning, like ten thirty in the morning, all the way to two in the morning, just dancing. So if you see like my calluses and stuff like that from all the you know flipping on the rails and stuff, um, you know the people if you go to Times Square that flip over people and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. So that's basically what I was doing. Um, this wow. is before I even knew what TikTok was. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, at that time I was like nineteen, around there, but um. So from there, it, it taught me a lot. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and then when I went to Florida, same thing kind of happened. Uh, you know, rocky situations we all get into. I lived in my car for like probably like nine months straight. I dropped out of uh, college. Um, and then I came just back. I just took a flight, came back to Providence, had nowhere to stay. And then um, I hit up one of my friends, uh, Michelle, and I um, was like, hey, listen, I'm over here. Da, da, da. We went to a Chinatown, ate real quick. And she's like, okay, where am I dropping you off? I was like, I really don't have a place to stay. So from there, um, from there pretty much, yeah, everything, I started already, like that whole nine months of me just being by myself, no one to talk to. I pretty much thought about a lot of stuff like, okay, what what do I have to do to like not have to be in this situation again? Mm -hmm. um, and so from there on, I pretty much, uh, something just hit. So after the mall, so I was there. I was in Rhode Island for probably like three months, and I finally got the job at the mall. Yeah. The security guard, uh, like the director, knew who I was, and same thing with the other director who she left. But she worked for the province police for years. Mm. Um, 
But I pretty much, you know, worked at the problem space mall. Then, you know, that whole sturdy stuff happened one day. You know, I was always cool with the kids. So um, that just happened. And then I kind of like little by little started to slowly like find out what like, you know, I was meant to basically do. You know what I mean? And now, like today, I can say that, you know, my job, like well, I, it, it doesn't even feel like a job, but I feel like it's something that has to be done um, is to try to I'm, I'm like the, the, the voice for the youth, you know, so. Same thing with you, you know what I mean? You you bring out the news. I, I always tell people you're like a, uh, a news outlet for those who just stick to, like, social media. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't, because I don't watch the news, really. You know what I mean? If I watch it and I'll, like, check out your stuff, or, like, people send me your stuff and be like, oh, you know, and I, I, I feel like it's entertaining. It's better than, you know, watching the news all the time. I appreciate it, yeah. Um, but, yeah, so from there, you know, I, I just got more passionate about it. Yeah. The school tours, I started visiting schools two weeks ago. Today makes three. Oh, so it's freshly new. This is yeah, freshly new. Because I had a feeling, I'm like, oh, it's like newer, like a newer side of yeah, like the content that you've been doing. Newer like, side, kids yeah. now. So when I started, I was doing a lot of like, you know, drill with like, you know, uh, certain kids in like in Rhode Island that, you know, they're hotheads. Um, and then I went to New York City. As soon as the first time that I ever went to New York City, you know, doing the whole high five stuff or whatever, it was completely different from what they do. Um, I'm a very social person, you know what I mean? Um, and my energy is completely different. Sure, you see it like in the videos. Yeah, yeah. So basically, I started to kind of like try it all over. I did it in Florida. Florida got tons of love. That's how I blew up even more. I started uh, going to the outlets, reached out to, uh, you know, I, I walked into shoe places and I'm like, hey, this is what I do. This is my TikTok. I had like 33 point something K around there, 23, right? Like 23, something like that around there. Yeah. Um, I, bro, I didn't. I didn't really have any like big following. Mm -hmm. It was just how I sold myself. You know what I mean? And from there, by the time I came back and I landed uh, in New York City after Florida, bro, the sky was a limit. After that, I, I started doing collabs with a lot of like famous TikTokers, like six point three million, like a, a whole bunch. You know, and it, it didn't even feel like I was with like these famous TikTokers. It just felt like we were just a family. You know what I mean? Yeah. So anytime I go to New York, it's just like a whole like family. So then when I come back to Prob, it's like, oh, Prob's boring. I want to go to New York already. So I started going to Boston, started doing my stuff there. Um, and from there, it hit me. It was like, hold on. I could do something that Providence doesn't have. Like, you, did I I honestly feel like you're the only podcaster that I do know of. You know what I mean? Out here that that actually covers a lot of stuff. Um, but I was like, there's no dancers. Yeah, yeah. There is, but there isn't like in the New York. That stand out or like, yeah that stand out or you know what i mean thing. exactly so i started basically you know uh catching on to that and then i started you know like thinking i started going to uh federal hill i yeah. worked at a couple of restaurants and bartending um after the security job stuff and i started going to businesses hey you know this is this is my stuff i dance you know this and that i can help you promote you know started selling myself um and from there you know i made great relationships so a lot of the owners in federal hill um, they know me, um, and so from there, it just kind of, like, skyrocketed. And has it always been, like, you dancing with the security guard outfit? Yeah, so yeah. I did um, I did some videos without the outfit, yeah. um, but honestly, I, I feel like it's it's a niche already, you know what I mean? Uh, if I walk down the street, like, they'll be like, oh, that, that you know what I mean? They want to do videos and stuff, uh, but if I don't, like, there's been times I was uh, going home, like, 2, 3 in the morning. I'll take, like, you know, the like, scooter sometimes. Like, I, I just be chilling in my own world. Mm -hmm. but uh, there'll be, like, police officers. They'll come, like, up to me, and they'll, uh, like, pull me over, put the lights on or whatever, and they'll be like, aren't you that guy from Instagram, like, TikTok? I'm like, yeah, and I'm like, that's crazy. I'm not even wearing the shirt, you know? Um, yeah, so they recognize you even without it, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and pretty much, you know, the, the more consistent I became, uh, the more people started to notice me, like, even without the uniform. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that that's pretty much, like, how it all started to go, and I'm like, damn, and I was like, you know what, uh... I hosted a event, Work Mall. This was like I think like three weeks ago. Yeah, like three three weeks ago. Um, there was like forty plus kids there because everyone was like, "Oh, come to Work Mall, come to Work Mall." Yeah, yeah. Because Providence Place Mall, they don't want me there. Like they yeah, have a history with them. Yeah, they they just don't. They're you know how the city is. Like most people will hate, some people will love or whatever, but they just don't want me there because now that I'm known for like security and all that. But they, they don't really want me there, like, if I'm wearing this and I dance. I can't even make a dance video in the mall, even if there's, like, no speaker, like, nothing. Is it, like, what, legally, you think, too? Like, you can't legally do it, probably, or? Um, 
Uh, at this point, I don't know, because there's little kids, you know, they'll go make their sturdy videos yeah, I've and seen stuff. Those, those you like... know, so it, I, I, I just feel like it's probably because I'm a big, like, you know, person now, like, there. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Um, I'm cool with the director. I knew him since I was 16. Yeah, yeah. Um, but went to work mall, and there was, like, 40-plus kids waiting for me. You know, they were messaging me on, on TikTok. Like, anyone that responds to me or, like, hits me up, I, I take my time. I'm not Hollywood. I, you mm-hmm. know, it just takes a little bit of time because there's a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. But um, I went to work, mom. Um, I went through, like, the Macy's side spell within three minutes. And I'll, I'll give you the video so you can see it. But uh, within three minutes, I had an officer come up to me. And he was like, oh, you need to leave. You cause problems, this and that, that, that. They had all those 40-plus kids in the front of the mall, like, outside of the mall. Wow. So, like, these kids weren't inside the mall. Everyone that was there to see me was outside of the mall. Um, and they had, like, police officers. Uh, the, they had the cruisers. They have all the security guards. So once they see me, I had, like, my jacket on and stuff like that. I didn't even have no music, but I was at three minutes. Three wow. minutes in tops. Um, approached me, and he just, like, grabbed me in, like, a, you know, a very rude, like, aggressive way. And he was telling me to stop, which I stopped, you know, walking, whatever. And he was, like, Basically, just trying to get my information. He's like, "Give me your name and your and your address." I was like, it's "Tropicana Danny." You know what I mean? Like, and then he's like, "No, your real name." And I was like, you, "I'm not gonna give you that information. I didn't did I commit a crime?" And you know, obviously, I didn't. You know, but yeah, it, yeah. it led to me basically running. And then I went outside of the mall. There was this lady with dogs. She was about to let him go. Some random guy in a red Mustang started chasing me in his car, trying to hit me. And then uh, there was like two cruisers coming from the side of the mall. And then I I flipped over the fence, my phone fell, and it cracked. But um, I jumped right back over, grabbed my phone, jumped over again the fence, and then the police officer kind of like threw himself over. And this is a guy from the street, so they called for backup. Yeah. Um, and then he comes and he gets me because the highway's right there, and I'm like, there's no way I'm about to just jump on the highway, which I did parkour for years, so I have no problem doing it. But it's like there's no, the, I'm not a criminal, you know what I mean? Like there, there's no way this is happening right now. So I go and I, I turn around. I'm like, all right, bro, you got me. He's like, oh, you know, put your hands on it. And he started cursing, uh, like, behind your back. I'm like, I got my phone in my hand. Just give me a second. Put my phone away, whatever. He arrested me. And I'm like, you're pretty fast. You know, like, me and him, we were cool. You know what I mean? I'm, yeah. I work with uh, a lot of, like, police officers in different, like, counties. Um, so, like, Providence uh, Police Department, uh, Cranston. You know, like, some of the officers, SROs, most of them from all the schools in Rhode Island. I'm doing this Rhode Island school tour. So it focuses on... Going to all the schools, talking to all the kids. Yeah. But, um, you know, that happened. I had to go to court, everything like that. They charged me for obstruction and vandalism, saying that I broke the fence. And then I went to court, and basically everything was pretty much dropped. But it, the judge was even laughing. He was like, there's no way. Like, you know, the, the state trooper, he went and revealed the case. And he was like, you know, uh, he was known to have a group of 40-plus kids at the mall. Uh, This was Friday the 13th. Mm. Um. And basically... Was it like inciting a riot, basically? Similar to like the Kai Sinai situation, like mm, inciting a riot or... Nah, they, they didn't really put it like that. It was, They just focused more on me running and then yeah, the yeah. whole fence trying to say I broke it. Yeah, yeah. Um, And they basically, you know, found out that the fence was always broken. Because I was like, there's no... <laughs> the, bro, the, the fence was like eight feet. I'm only five, seven. Yeah. Um, you've seen my height. I'm not that tall to break a freaking eight feet fence. <laughs> um. Anyways, so... They dropped that or whatever, and then the whole obstruction thing, like, it it literally, like, comes down to the point of, like, even in the video, there's not once I swear. The reason why is because I do a lot of stuff with the police. Boston police, I have the um, dispatcher's number. So anytime I go to Boston, I just call her up, and she'll send any officer anywhere that I'm at in Boston so I could do a video because basically my main focus is to break the ice between not only the kids but even the people in Rhode Island and the cops. Yeah. That that's my main goal because the security in Providence Place Mall, a lot of people don't like. I don't like. There's some that are actually like good, uh, you know, officers in that mall, but for the stuff that I have that I've seen, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie that it it's corrupted. They walk in, it's like a gang. It's not even a security. You know what I mean? They'll go and if they get off a of camera, they'll beat on. You know, so it's it's not good. So this is why you know I wear this. And I I wear it with pride because this, this is not from the mall, you know what I mean? I, I have my own, like, merch, my own stuff. But it's to show, like, people, whoever see this, they're going to think, if you actually know who I am, you know exactly where I started. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of kids that followed me from the beginning. 
like when I but when I just started TikTok from that first video till today and they they come up to my events I I do stuff with restaurants in the city um next month Juniors Providence we're basically doing a uh free sliders day for anyone that comes in cuz it's Thanksgiving a lot of families don't really have that type of money to you know feed their kids or themselves anyone that's homeless anyone in the community of Rhode Island or anywhere they can just come in free sliders well, you know what i mean so i i i work to get you know the community like you know to to help them out you know yeah, yeah. cuz no one's doing it like that in Providence or even in New York. You know what I mean? You got everyone just making the TikToks, the videos, boom. They'll make their money, whatever it is, and that's it. Yeah. But me, I'm more passionate about doing what I love to do, but also giving changing, back. but mm -hmm. giving back. You know, because without change, you can't really give as much. You know what I mean? Because yeah. it's like I could be doing this for, you know, a little bit or some time, you know, and then next thing you know, I get older or whatever. And then it's like, all right, he's gone. We'll remember him. And then that's it. That's not what I want. You know what I mean? I, I want to have something that, like, is there forever. You know what I mean? Yeah, the impact, yeah. Exactly. So, uh, 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 impact that changes Rhode Island, not just some, you know, kid from TikTok just dances and goes to schools and, you know what I mean? I, I don't, that's not what I want. No, I respect you know that. What I, mean? I respect so, that because there's another level to it where it's like there's a layer that is being revealed of the, you know, passion you have and just a personality where it's like easily, like you said, you can't, you don't have to, you know, a lot of people don't really, realistically, I've never, I don't see that very often, maybe in the, maybe when they blow up, blow up and if like, they reach like a bigger status of like, America's got talent level or something like that, but you are in the early stages of this and already are giving back to your city, so... I think it's a beautiful thing to see. So what would you say, you know, you, you know, anywhere people go, they know you as, you know, the security guard that dances from Providence, Rhode Island. But what has been then the biggest or like worst case scenario, the most dangerous thing that you faced? Was it that situation at Work Mall? Yeah, honestly, it, it was definitely the Work Mall situation. Work Mall situation? Um, I feel like that right there, um, it that affects... was recent too, right? It was recent. Yeah. That's crazy. It was recent. Um... I feel like that, it, it was very unnecessary. Um, you know, I feel like if the officer was to come up to me, you know, in the right way and stuff like that, not like rude, because, you know, imagine I was to come up to you and I was to talk to you rude. You know what I mean? Um, you wouldn't want to give me your information, especially if you're like someone that's known, you know, you never know what people are capable of, especially like not knowing me. But uh, definitely that. And um, they had to take a picture like, you know, for, like, trespass. like the, So the malls, they basically, they take a trespass picture. Oh, they yeah, don't yeah. get you I on the... like, the wall of people. Yeah, the wall of people. So um, pretty much they took a picture of me in the cruiser. And um, from that picture, they actually made Instagram pages. And it they started making, like, fake profiles and stuff like that, saying, like, oh, uh, got caught or 401 got... Like, stuff like that. I'm, like... And they'll comment on my, you know, like, reels. What do you mean? So, like, trolls? Trolls, yeah. So, But, but like, saying, like, what, like, um, oh, they, they finally got him? Yeah, type exactly. Shit? Okay, so, okay. basically, you know, there's there's that whole thing. And I'm like, that this is corny, you know. I, I didn't even bother hitting up their account because it's like, it comes with what you do. There's a lot yeah, of people you know, that don't like me. There's a lot of people that be like, oh, it's cringe. Just off of what I do. Like, it, I've lived in Rhode Island for all my life. I was known in the car scene back in the days for being, you know, one of the youngest kids that built a car from scratch, like bodywork, all that. I built a car for my senior project nice. in PCTA. So, you know, I have scholarships and stuff. Everyone knows me for, like, climbing buildings, all that stuff, like most people. Yeah. Um. So most of the hate I already know is going to come naturally based off of what I do. You know, there's songs. Most of the songs that I use is trending songs. You know what I mean? But however, um, the drill music, you know, I listen to drill music. I listen, I listen to a lot of different musics, but yeah. drill is where I focus because a lot of the kids, especially in Providence, that's what they listen to. I have... Um, they I'll love that shit. I'll show you, yeah, I'll, I'll show you the videos, but um, I talk to the kids. Every school that I go to, high school and middle school, that's the only ones that I've been to so far. Yeah. I just did one in uh, Kennedy Plaza the other day. I got all the kids in Kennedy Plaza to make like a huge circle, and I talk to them each, you know what I mean? Um, well, actually, as a, as a whole. Mm -hmm. And I asked these kids, I'm like, uh, I want to let you guys know something. I know you guys know that I'm in the Rhode Island school tours right now. That That's what I'm doing, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, they tell me, yeah. I'd be like, all right, you guys know me from the Problem Space Mall. Yeah. All right. So I want to get to this quick because I know you guys got to catch your buses or even like the schools, the teachers listen to everything like that. And I tell them, drill music, what's drill music? And then, they'll, you know, they'll, they'll tell me. They'll be like, everyone here listens to it? They'll be like, yeah. I'll be like, okay, now does it influence you? 
pretty much all of them say yes. You know what I mean? We all know whatever you listen to, you become in a certain way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I tell them, what is it that, because there's teachers that don't know what this music is. So, you know, I have the kids explain it. One, I, I let them raise their hand or whatever, and I pick them up. And I tell them, uh, what does drill music talk about? You got kids, and these kids are like 14, 13. <laughs> Deads, uh, dissing on deads, killing, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, money, girls, all that stuff. Kate you know Flock. what I mean? Yeah. You know what I mean? So um, these teachers, they're hearing it. These kids are hearing it. And I was like, all right, so that's the problem. I was like, now, you guys know the type of music that I use, right? You know what I mean? And I'm not going to lie, bro. I get sick and tired of the music that I use. It, it, it gets annoying, but it's like it's trending. And then on top of that, it, it brings a type of, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's strategic. It's strategic. Yeah, it's, so, it's gonna work. And, and do you even play them while you're dancing to them? Or do uh, you yeah. dub it after? No, nah, I play them. So you play like on a phone or something? Like, speaker. like a speaker? Yeah. Speaker? So I have I have two speakers. I have a JBL. Yeah. So it has like, um, basically, uh, like kind of like a fanny pack type okay, of yeah, like thing like, yeah, yeah, I know what you, you just mean. put it right here so when uh they record you know they go like that i have it right here okay that's like if it's gonna be something that's like quick yeah. so like if i go to a mall that's what i'm gonna have just in case like if i got a dip or whatever it is you know yeah. what i mean now if it's in public areas like right now i'm doing the schools i have a ion speaker and it's like this this loud bro it's it's loud and you can sit you down could go anywhere. to a club and i play that speaker on it's gonna go over that like yeah, yeah. the music um so that's pretty much, you know, what I use. So I have two types of speakers. The Ion is what uh, everyone uses in New York City. Mm -hmm. So it's good for, like, outside or, like, you know, depends. Yeah, yeah. That's dope. Um, so basically, you know, that's that's how I make my videos. And then when I edit them, I uh, use InShot, boom, you know, do my whole edit stuff, and then that's it. So I do from the strategizing to talking to everyone to, you know, uh, letting kids, like, speak or whatever, letting them dance, you know, I coordinate everything, and then I also do all the editing. Wow. You know what I mean? Dope, yeah. um, so I have my camera guy and I have like my, uh, you know, side little backup dancer or whatever. Um, but I focus on, you know, talking to these kids, making sure that they understand that there's a lot of different things that you do. A lot of kids are like, oh, you're famous. Bro, anyone that tells me, oh, like you're famous and stuff like that, I'm like, I'm not. You know what I mean? They're like, oh, yeah, look, that's not. I'm like, that doesn't make me famous. You know what I mean? And they're like, oh, how can I get to like, you know, being big on TikTok and stuff? And I, I talk to these kids like they'll anyone like mess. I'm. You hear my phone buzzing. Yeah. I talk to anyone, you know what I mean? I, I talk to all these kids. There's kids that feel suicidal. I talk to them, you know what I mean? They say that people make fun of them when they get sturdy and stuff like that. Um, bro, a whole bunch of stuff. There's a lady who just messaged me. She had uh, brain cancer, and she's like, you know, being in the hospital for so many days, she's watched all my videos every single time I post, um, that it makes her day feel even better, and that now, uh, you know, she recovered and everything like that. And I'm just like... You know what I mean? And it's a whole different purpose I had and all these people are getting to me so it makes me more motivated. Facts. Parents, teachers, principals reaching out to me. Uh, teachers in uh, New York City, businesses in New York City, in Boston reaching out to me on how I can get to their school and stuff. And it's like I just started two weeks ago. You yeah. know what I mean? My, my first video was East Providence. I don't know if you've seen the East Providence video. Uh, but it hit 8 point, I think it's at 8.2 million it's the highest. Oh, I, think I saw that on your Instagram. Instagram, right? I yeah. Saw that, yeah. So that that's the highest in that whole soundtrack. And yeah. then I did one in Hope High School. Uh, one of the SRO officers, Danny, um, he got me to go in there. You know what I mean? To you know do my videos, speak to the kids and stuff. That one's about to hit ten million on TikTok, and both of those videos were dropped this month. You know what I mean? Uh, the beginning of the week. So I was like, damn. Like you know what I mean? Uh, this whole movement that I just started is it's exploding. Imagine. Gavisa, you know, he he came to one of the schools. That's how I met him. Uh, he brought two of his kids that they knew me from TikTok. You know what I mean? They don't even go to that school. And this was in um, Birchwood, right? Yeah, Birchwood. I've only been to seven schools. And you know what I mean? A, a lot of parents still reach out to me and stuff like that. I have this broadcast channel on Instagram where I have all these kids, you know, just tap in. Um, so any events, anything that I do, they'll know. And only I can, you know, text on yeah. it. You know what I mean? Because you know how kids get. Yeah. But, uh, that's dope. Yeah, so that, that's pretty much how all that functions and stuff like that, especially with the whole drill and stuff. And then I talk to the kids, tell them, listen, if you give good back, you get a, a ton more back. You know what I mean? Even if you're you're not even, like, wanting it. You know what I mean? Because I'm just doing this natural. Going to the schools, like, last week, right, Uh, I went to 
five schools, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Friday, I did East Providence uh, High School, yeah. their pep rally, you know, after everything that's happened or whatever. Um, five schools. This is at my own time. I don't get paid for any of this stuff. You know what I mean? Uh, and it's a lot of time. I got a lot of videos I got to edit. I got a lot of kids who hit me up like, oh, when are you dropping this video? This and that and that. When I'm in one school, I got to be posting at this time and I'm not able to because, you know, I'm, I'm still, you know, the kids want to take pictures, autographs. I talk to them. You know, so it, it, there's a lot behind it. You yeah, know? And you got to dance too. You, you know, exactly. You, you dancing is a full-on, you know, exercise. Have you ever injured yourself? Like, you have, what's the craziest injury injury that you faced while dancing at all, if any? Um, that's common, I feel like, because I have it, a couple is. cousins that break dance and, like, they, they've, they've gone through everything. Like, yeah, so I feel like the... Worst one, um, for dancing, it would be, uh, I was in New York, and I did, uh, it was like an air flare, and I, like, my whole soul just popped right out. Damn. And then, as soon as I went to try to get up, it popped right back in, but I was, like, I was, like, done for the night. And and I had just got to New York, too, and <laughs> it was in Times Christ. Square, so it, it was, like, the worst. And then I kind of, like, just held my arm like this, and then I had a Spider-Man costume, Miles Morales. Okay. I, I do, like, videos like that, too. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I like wrapped it around and stuff and just had it there for a little bit. Uh, and then I just went back to dancing. Like I was out till like four in the morning, just dancing in Times Square. Jesus it was crazy. Christ. But, what, uh, what a, a re, a just, or geez, a just repopped in yeah. shoulder. But it, 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 it stayed for a bit. I'm not going to lie. Like, uh, it was on this arm right here. Sometimes I, I sometimes might feel it. Yeah. But, um, uh, it's not too crazy. And then the song selection, I feel like for the most part, correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like every time I, I see like your clips that people send and stuff, it's always like the same or the main song um, that always gets stuck in my head is, um, get it on the floor, <laughs> get it on the floor. Yeah, baby. that song is so what, annoying, what, 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 I, And I've seen like other TikTokers use that song as one of the most popular ones. Yeah. But what is that song? Like, what, what does it start? Is it like a remix of something? So it's basically sped up. A sped up one. Sped up version. Okay. So basically we have like these, uh, it's, believe it or not, it's, it's TikTok accounts. Yeah. Uh, they make the sped up edition. So there's, there's people on TikTok. Um, not a lot of people probably know about this, but there are TikTok accounts that make only beats. Yeah. And these beats are made for either Jersey or uh, like Jersey Philly, you know, like hips and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, or sturdy. So you can do like Taylor Swift's. You could do like a and any type of music you think. Yeah. Uh, so like, say if there's a, a trending song that Mariah Carey makes or something like that, they're gonna take that song if it's really popular, and they're gonna make it into like a sturdy beat or a Jersey beat. You know what I mean? Because they're taking a trending song and they're flipping it into their own version for all the dancers to put out there. Yeah, yeah. And so that's that how sense. you know a lot of kids. Whoever they watch, they're going to obviously be influenced by. They look up to the person. They're going to start using those sounds. Um, so that's pretty much how that is. So uh, that song that you were singing is called Dancing uh, Kronos. Um, that is like one of the, till this day, the most annoyingest song, but also the most trending song. So like whenever I post, I never focus on getting the audience that is in my state. I focus on getting out nationwide. Yeah. You get what I mean? So... Maybe you watched the video, but there's someone else that hasn't watched the video. So if I drop four videos with the same song, it it's still matter. it's getting new people. Yeah, every yeah, time. it doesn't matter. It's not you know like, oh, I mean? he does the same fucking song, but it's like no, this but is I, this I, is the, this is different. Yeah. I hate it. Yeah, yeah. I hate it so much, bro. I'm not. I'm. I even I even tell it, bro. I, you gotta reach out it. to the artist, like the original artist of the, this song. It, I hope, bro. It's <laughs> it's it's been only uh nine months total with TikTok, but nine months in this whole journey. You know, that's when I lost my job. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I didn't work for three months too. I was just after I lost my job. I'm like, all right, boom, New York City, yeah, yeah, Florida. I was like on a little like vacation tour, just like going to all these yeah. places, doing all my videos and stuff like that. But I was very focused on uh, getting to a, a certain point to where you know I can make money. First, it was me trying to make money off of social media. Then it completely changed, like yeah. completely changed. Like TikTok, I don't get paid on TikTok anymore. Like you know by the views. Because once you get paid, they pay like uh, 26 cents per thousand views. And um, I'm not going to lie, bro. When you do that, they lower um, they lower basically like your, your reach. Yeah. So they don't really want to pay you. So they lower how many people watch your stuff. Yeah. So now I'm like, all right, boom, I got this. So I, I took off all of that. Most of my people that are like big on TikTok, they told me about this too. And I've seen the results. You know what I mean? Um, 
you do get companies that reach out to you. So TikTok is good for anyone that's watching this right now too. If you guys are trying to grow on social media, TikTok is only good to expand what you're trying to like do. Either you're a singer, dancer, uh, trying to have a business, make shirts, whatever it is. TikTok is used for that. Yeah. A video that goes viral, a lot of people don't know this because, bro, the, this is daily. I deal with kids uh, and even people older than me. I'm 23. But, bro, super depressed because they're not getting views. They're not yeah. reaching what they expect to get off of a video that they worked hard on. They want to quit. They want to quit. So I dealt with the same thing. You know, maybe, yeah, sure, my first video I ever dropped on TikTok hit 1.4 million in just a night. You know what I mean? You go on my page, you scroll all the way down, you're going to see it. It's not that many scrolls. But with TikTok and Instagram, uh, even Facebook, for me, uh, it's candy. So when you make a video and say it skyrockets, it's viral now. You know what I mean? It's candy. Why? Because it's sweet for now. Everyone's feeding into it. But what happens when the candy's gone? You're back to square one. You get what I mean? Yeah. So it happens, but you got to stay consistent. When you have that candy rush go up, everyone's going to be focused on that video. There's some people that are going to keep looking on your page. Mm. It's very often. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, it does happen. Well, like when one video goes viral and then you see the videos you see, before it, exactly. you see like a number increase. Yep. So now when that happens, you have an active uh, account. Like right now on TikTok, I have 12 million within just... The 30, not 28 days, because they don't do 30, but 12 million, and it's based off of one video and also like three other videos. So when you make a video, I usually post like three times, sometimes one time uh, in a day, or like, you know, uh, you got to just stay consistent. Yeah. Um, If you feel like you worked really hard on a video, you're like, okay, this, this is the one, this is going to go viral, and it doesn't go viral, like... First thing I'm going to tell you right now is the one that usually you think is going to be the best video is the one that's not going to go viral. That's one thing I learned. I did, um, I'm pretty sure the uh, the song, you see me in the food court, it's on TikTok, mm -hmm. that has like four point, I think six mil or something like that. You know how quick it took me to take that video? How long? Bro, it was a four second video, like idea, boom, video, boom. We were literally getting kicked out of the mall. Security was on their way up. Oh wow! So, so literally, the, the length out. the length of that video is how fast we were in and out. Wow! So that was a, like a super rush clip. The kid that came in and danced was a random kid that goes to uh, Alvarez. Mm -hmm. Um, but he see me. He's like, "Yo, what's up? Um, can can I do it?" I was like, "You want to do a video? All right, come. So I'm gonna do a video right now. Just when I tell you to jump in, jump in. You could see where he kind of like hesitated yeah. and then went in. So that video was rushed. Yeah, four point six million. That's how it be sometimes. Yeah. Like the most organic ones. Mm -hmm. organic moments blow up and people gravitate towards them rather than like the specifically like planned strategic shit like people don't really they don't really love it like the cookie cutter stuff like like moments yeah. like that you can't even really predict it and it's it's definitely uh it, it's getting more challenging because now you got people like me who just all they got to do is skip and go straight and it goes viral you know what i mean like the the slip back video you know the juby slide yeah yeah that video, I'm not even gonna lie. That that dance is really dumb. You know, <laughs> it's just you slip literally just back, slip back. You yeah, know, yeah. and and that's it, like a recent one, right? So that's like the most recent, recent like trend. So right now, right? believe the it or not, it thing? was trending back then. Oh, they it brought just it back. came back. They wow. brought it back. I'm hopefully they bring back. You know, they hit the folks. Yeah, you oh, know, like, that, that was a shit, the, the, the yeah. jerk and everything. Th those were like the best times. Yeah, I, I feel like that. That was like actually. Yeah, I used to hit the Dougie all the time in school. Would you say that you were the first dancer? on tiktok to like do like the security like outfits have you or, yeah yeah you would say so, you yeah. look it up anyone uh that looks it up and you put sturdy security guard and the only one who pops up there's not no other security only one yeah. so even tiktok knows that whole thing it's just it's, it's just me I you'll see tropicana dan tropicana danny or anyone that tags me i'm the only security guard in the whole world and i can say that because i've done my research yeah um so yeah and same thing with with tropicana you look that up, Tropicana Danny, only person that pops up. And Tropicana because of Florida? So, yeah, but my car that I built was uh, orange. So mm, I worked at Body car, Shops. What car was it? It was a 1992 Honda Civic uh, hatchback. Oh, nice. And then I put um, a TSX motor into it. And then mm. I made it like, I had an all motor and then I put it supercharged. But I'm a gearhead too. So I, I built oh, that so car speaking, from scratch. Speaking Marlon's language over there. Yeah. He loves cars. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <laughs> everyone knew me for my orange hatch. Um I got sponsored by like, the biggest that. companies. I remember seeing that that car. 
Yeah, and it, I used to drive with no hood all the time. Yeah, wow. and then um, that was that was back in like twenty, like nineteen around uh, around there. I finished it before my high school year. Wow. But um, everyone knew me from there, and especially when I went to Florida, pff, everyone, everyone in Kissimmee, Orlando, um, Tampa, Daytona, they know who I was because the sponsorships I had were the biggest ones. Yeah, to this day, they're the biggest ones. Um, but I know I, I sold that car. I got tired of the car scenes. Kind of want to switch everything up. Uh, and focus a little bit more on something different, like real life stuff, because you can spend so much money on a car and not get anything back, and then things break, and then it's like it's just a headache, yeah. you know. The you car scene. You hear that, Marlo? <laughs> you hear that Marlo? Yeah, it's a lifestyle, it, bro. It, it, it is a lifestyle, it's, it's not but for the week, bro. <laughs> it's, I mean, I, I I started at sixteen, you know. Uh, but if if I do, I said if I do get back into cars for sure, I want to get into drift cars. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Nah, not no front wheel drive. I had it all wheel drive. For I made it all wheel drive, all wheel drive Civic. So you sold it? Yeah, I got rid of it, so I parted it out. Okay. Yeah, I parted the whole that's, car. That's out. how you was gonna make the most money. Yeah, you make the money off of just yeah. parting out the cars. Yeah, because it's so unique that you would have to find someone that would want to buy it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It wouldn't be like that easy you, to sell. You would have, but the thing is that people who are into cars want to build the car. They don't want to buy a, a, a already built car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, some some people do. I have a couple friends. It's um, rare though. But to raffle it off. That's where you make the money. You raffle any yeah. parts off. Raffling is like the best bet for anything. You know what I mean? Especially in the car scene. You got a lot of low ballers. Especially right now. Uh, everything's high in the market because like they are not manufacturing parts at all right now. Like it's, Oh, with the strike and like um, the Chevy and like the Ford workers and stuff? Just like that. Yep. Yeah. Um, so it's it's definitely a, a big issue. So that's one of the reasons why like, you know, I'd, I'd wait for a part for my car. It's coming in eight months. Yeah. And it's like, bro, now the next part that I need, I got to wait like five months, you know? So it just wasn't really worth it, especially uh, I had the Waggle, you know, the drivetrain. Mm -hmm. That right there, I got it imported from Italy uh, from one of my family members, and then they sent it out to New York. That's $4,000 for just a drivetrain, like from here to here. Hell no. Yeah. A little <laughs> bit longer, but yeah, $4,000 for just that. It's expensive. Jesus expensive. Christ. Oh, to rebuild the whole motor, it was like 12000 You know, motor store, I just... Threw yeah. myself away from that. Yeah, but yeah. I'm glad I did because it opened up new opportunities. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, I wouldn't be standing here if I didn't make those, you know, choices. It, it hurt. But, you know, um, I felt like it was like, you know, you got to give certain things up for bigger blessings. Yeah, yeah. You know, and that led to me coming here and, and you know, doing my whole dancing stuff, you know, because a lot of stuff, I've been through a lot. I've lived in the ghetto. I've, I've been in, you know, situations and around people that are not mm -hmm. good at all. Mm -hmm. Um. But I learned, I learned a lot. So definitely, you know, anyone that's watching, if you guys ever go through anything, you know, feel suicidal or want to learn how to grow on social media, like any anything of that sort, um, definitely feel free to hit me up. You know, my inbox is always open. You know, come respectfully. Um, I do like to help people out. You know, that's my knowledge. You know, I'm, I'm more than happy to help anyone out, you know, so... Yeah, definitely. And one of the last one of the last questions I have in mind, when it comes to you, you kind of were alluding to it a bit earlier, and it seems like I definitely feel like you have the answer for this. When it comes to you, you know, right now, you've done this almost a year now, dancing, being the dancing security guard, right? You're 23 years old. Where do you see yourself, like, 10 years from now? Do you see yourself, like, you know, being 40 years old, dancing still, or do you see yourself maybe dancing but not as a security guard, maybe doing something else in that realm, or is there a potential rebrand again? Because there's already another rebrand that you've done. You went from the car scene to this. So what do you see yourself maybe 10 years from now? So uh, everything that I do, do, definitely, you know, and I was just talking about this today. I don't see myself really wearing the, the security thing. You know what I mean? I, I know right now it's my niche, but... That's what works. You know what I mean? It It, it works. I could possibly be the security stuff. It it's a uh, you know missing a hit. I don't know. Right now it's it's doing perfect. Like yeah. I got uh some merch. You know what I mean. I got hats that I sell. Um, you know we've been working on something. You know same thing with the shirts. So this one right here doesn't say, but it it'd be a sturdy security guard. Okay. You know what and I mean. You can sell those. Um, Are you selling them right now? Yeah. So um right now I'm in process of doing that whole thing. So, but smart. it's gonna look exactly like this. You know what I mean. And That's then smart, the back yeah. it'll say like you know Tropicana Danny. Um, and then I'm going to host like this huge event where everyone just comes out with their shirts. Um, I'm going to have like, you know, the A flash mob vibe, like dancing. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, right now I, I'm talking to, this is one dude, his name's Kelvin. He's a lot of people know him. He's a dance instructor. Okay. Um, probably like in his thirties, but, um, 
Uh, we're gonna basically try to do flash mobs in Providence now. That'd be dope. Um, so bunch of security guards. Not even just security guards, but like just random people. Like you know, because he teaches people who want to just have fun and dance. Okay. And I'm like, yo, you know, um, we can definitely do something like flash mob and prop. Like that. That's different. That's changing the game. You know what I mean? That would um, viral. So definitely, you know, we're gonna be working on that. But I do see myself as a motivational speaker. Okay. You know what I mean? Uh, so right now I'm working with the school districts, um, and him as well. We're we're about to start going to the schools probably like this week around there. But I, I got a lot of people. I got the state representative right now uh, on board with it. Um, and right now, the movement that I do have, it's it's making a lot of noise right now in the city. You know, uh, I go to any schools, and they already know who I am. The Met High School I'll be going to in November. I'm, I'm already booked for half of November for schools, but they want me to go and speak to the students. You know, every time I dance, I speak to the students. You know what I mean? Um, that's, then, that's your demographic. That's who exactly. you're reaching. So you, 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 it's, it's dope how I respect how you... Are making sure like you recognize who you're influencing and you're recognizing what you're doing with that influence rather than misusing it you know a lot of people can just misuse it use it for clout ignore them completely but you know yeah. especially you're in a position where it's like no matter what you would be forced not to ignore it because like when you go out and these kids show you love you have to be you know respectful and like responsive and like help them out and even at first i know like you said it probably still does feel a bit weird but i could see yourself slowly transitioning you know maybe being a Oh, uh, actual speaker! I can see that happening. Yeah. A motivational speaker, at least at least for schools. I can yeah, see how it could work. Yeah, yeah, that could but, be really um, dope. Definitely, you know that. Oh, I mean, I, I don't mind staying in Rhode Island, but I want to also like kind of like branch, branch out. out. Okay. You know what I mean? I got like schools in New York that are hitting me up, and I'm like, listen, this is a Rhode Island school tour. It's not New York City school tours. You know what I mean? Because uh, I always I always tell these middle schools too. You know, I would tell them, listen, you guys right now look up to all these drill rappers. At, you know who's doing what. You guys hold the most weight in this city. The reason why is because they're the ones who make the future. You get what I mean? Mm -hmm. So whatever these little kids are doing, it's going to influence the next generation. 100%. And then the next generation. Yeah. And they don't really realize that. So I feel like they need someone that, you know, they know is big. on. Bro, I, I see these kids, like some of them go on their knees and like, Mike King. I'm like, no, bro, just get up. <laughs> You know what I mean? I'm like, bro, don't do not do that. You know, but, like, to, to see that, you know, that they, the way that they, bro, even on lives, bro, they go crazy. But these kids, he's, he's seen it, right? She's seen it. Bro, these kids, I've never experienced in my life how much love kids can give. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm like, damn, I'm not even a dad. You know what I mean? But uh, <laughs> they definitely show a lot of love. So, you know, if you give them that that pure, natural, like, you know, love, you know, and what I'm doing right now they definitely will pass it on, you know. So I, yeah. I talked to them, I'm like, listen, you guys know why I'm here in this school right now, right? And they were like, um, no, like, you know what I mean? I'll be like, you guys worked as a team. Mm. You know what I mean? Because how I pull up to schools is that I do uh, reels. I'm Not reels, I'm sorry. Like polls or something? I do polls mm -hmm. on Instagram. I do, uh, so this is how I start. I'll do it on TikTok. I'll go and I'll make announcements throughout the week um, and I'll have people, it's in my, in my, spot, uh, my highlights on my mm -hmm. Instagram. And same thing on Snapchat, you know what I mean? But I basically go, I announce the day that I'm going to be doing them. I do them on Sundays. Sundays, uh, Saturdays into Sundays. Yeah. Um, but I basically announce the votes. And I put all the schools in the pools on TikTok. Yeah. And basically anyone, it's generated by comments. So when they comment the schools, I, I you know, give their instructions, put the school name, boom, boom, boom. Everyone starts flooding the comments crazy. You know, there's people who sign gifts and stuff like that. So I do this thing. Basically, whoever uh, wins, there's... So this week, I'm doing only two schools. Last week, I did five. It's training. So I cut down to two just for this week because um, I got to obviously have my real life too. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, so basically, I go and I cut them down. I do, you know, schools. They vote. I look at the comments, and then I update them. Up to like 100K likes on the live, that's when I reveal it. You know what I mean? Or if it gets even higher, whichever or. You know, I, once I hit 100K, I ask them, do you guys want to still keep going? I'll tell them the list. You guys want to keep, go uh, like, keep going or do you guys want to just stop? And then they'll be like, oh, just stop. I'm like, okay, so this is the winning schools. This is first place. This is second place. Or if I do like a third place. Um, and then the highest gifter, I DM them and I tell them, hey, what school do you go to? You know what I mean? If they're in Rhode Island, I'd be like, all right, I'm going to go to your school. I'm going to make your school go second place because you're, you're the top gifter in the live. Huh. You know what I mean? So I, it, it's kind of like a fun little game. You know what I mean? It, it yeah. helps me out. 
you know, they get to have their help, like, you know. Interactive. Interactive, you know what I mean? And, and they, they send uh, lives to their friends and stuff. And then from there, if it's like a tiebreaker, if like uh, right now I'm doing achievement first. There's three achievement firsts I never even knew about. Yeah, yeah, I spoke at two of them. I was, that was the first time I found out about them last year. I'm like, what is this? Achievement first? This yeah, so that one right now is the school I'm going to tomorrow. It's the high school. Oh, nice. So I put just achievement first. Um, I did the middle school and the high school. The high school is one by like uh, 500 and something votes. And then the middle school had like three something. Wow. So now I found out there was two middle schools. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to surprise them. You know, and show up to the middle school one, but I'm gonna put the Cranston, and then I believe there's like a Hartford or like Hartford or something like that. No, one of those. I, I don't know. I'm still kind of like learning about the schools. Yeah, but like I'm gonna put the two middle schools. schools. Yeah. Then from there, uh, I'll let them vote, and then I'll show up to the you know the school. Yeah, yeah. But that's kind of how I do it. I basically play like you know fun games with the kids and stuff like that. So then when I go to the schools, they understand like yo, this work by teamwork. They have their parents. Go on my Instagram and vote. They have <laughs> teachers. Like, I, teachers even message me. Um, right? It's crazy. The, the amount of, like, people that get drawn into the page just to, like, vote for, you know, these kids that want, you know I mean, to go to their schools. So that's basically how I do it. I do it by votes. And then the last schools that I'll go to is basically whoever wasn't really, like, active on that. But I get them all to join, you know, uh, join the broadcast channel. That's on my, like, bio. Yeah. And then I just announced, hey, there's a vote going on right now. Make sure you guys are on task. Boom. And then uh, any reels that I do, I just throw them in there. Any events. I don't really spam too much. I hate spams. <laughs> so, um, you know, I, I keep it in that motion. And a lot of kids, they, I respect it. they definitely show a lot of love. You know what I mean? So, nine, no, two weeks. This is three now. So, it's it's been crazy. I have a lot of rappers uh, some rapper from New York City just came the other day. I was doing a promo for um, Stella Entertainment. Mm. I don't know if you ever heard of it. You heard of Stella Entertainment? No. Uh, but they basically hosted like uh, three club events all over like Rhode Island or whatever. Uh, like in downtown yeah. and Broad Street. But I basically, you know, I did a promo for them. I was basically doing um, story posts. I did reels. And then I also um, host. Mm. I do not like partying. I don't. I don't like clubs. I don't like lounges. I don't like any of that. I don't even drink and I don't even smoke. Same here. So, unless me going to these places, me shot, yeah, yeah. Me going to these places, bro, and I already don't even want to go. But now, that's where the bread comes in. You yeah. know what I mean? So, I also get to work with, like, you know, anyone that's there, they have kids. You know what I mean? They'll go on my page, boom, they know I do Spider Man birthday parties. I do pop ups even in just this. Um, If they need, like, a Deadpool or something like that, bro. I come with the flips and all that stuff. You know what I mean? So you get like the best package right there. And then, um, and I do travel, you know what I mean? Yeah. So even if you're in Connecticut, um, New York, Florida, I, I still travel. I make it happen, but you yeah. know, definitely it's, it's been fun. You know what I mean? I, I never wanted to work for anybody. So I feel like it's kind of getting into that point to where I can actually just be me. I, I wanted to get paid to be a dancer and to, you know, be just me so i feel like right now makes i have sense. those two things going on right now that makes sense this makes sense and then at the same time it's all correlating to the kids you know the next generation which is the mm -hmm. main thing that people gotta focus and highlight any any last thoughts uh uh noel Marlon, anything at all um you want me to go uh i want to go back to that mall situation yeah because i found that so interesting so I have to ask, you know, at any moment, did you make an effort or did the mall make an effort to try to create some form of partnership? Because I remember when Providence Place Mall was about to sell because they literally can't get any form of business. And it's like you being there creates a crowd. It creates an environment where people are going to go, want to be at the mall, want to spend money. Same concept with Warwick because it's like you said, you know, the judge saw the information and was like, what the hell is this? Like, mm -hmm. it sounds like they targeted you and it sounds like they tried to paint you to be something you weren't. And it's like they could have instead, you know, recognized you for the value that you provided to their institution and their business and be like, hey, like, let's form a partnership. If It sounds very racially driven. Yeah. And that's, you know, I just want to know, like, is there a backstory? Like, was there communication at any moment? So... Uh, for like what Providence Place Mall? Both or, of them. Both of them. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna try to keep it like a little short because kind of 
extravagant stories. Um, yeah, for like a, for like partnership ideas. Yeah, right? so yeah. for partnerships ideas. Um, okay, so let's go back to Problem Space Mall. I worked in that mall when I was like sixteen, all the way up. Now this is the part where I used to do a lot of parkour. So I've been on top of the Superman building. I've been on top of Biltmore, also the mall's rooftop. So now when I was younger, you know, this is, she's a management lady, uh, Quinn. She found out I worked for the mall, and this is when I left because she seen my TikTok videos. She does not like me. However, it's because of that whole, like, thing. And she's like, that's that kid from a long time ago. You know, why would you hire him? This and that She's just bipolar. But <laughs> I feel like that's one of the reasons. She's very biased, yeah. Yeah, biased. Uh, the second thing is uh, I did reach out. I'm like, hey. You know, I, I talked to the director. He said I had to talk to some other guy. But right now, Jersey, uh, in, in New Jersey, and American Dream Mall, they have basically anyone like me uh, go to that mall and they promote it. You know what I mean? They do okay, like, oh, nice. this day, you know. I'm like, why don't we do that here? Yeah. You know what I mean? I feel like if we do that here, there'll be more people to come. Yes, okay, there'll be kids, but you got to think about it. The mall right now is like in the hugest depth that like ever. Been. ever. They ever been and the the mall's infrastructure is breaking and falling apart and also mm -hmm. the mall allegedly I'm hearing behind the scenes is trying to charge people just for parking in general so everyone that goes in on your way in you're gonna have to allegedly within a year or so pay a dollar because they're saying that that's like millions of dollars that they're missing out on by just paying just to go in so imagine that you go into the mall and now you're gonna pay a dollar which is like okay like if you go to Boston or like somewhere else like it's a common thing like you know. But out here, we're not used to that at all. So for them to do that is just a sign of them trying to become desperate, create scenarios rather yeah. than do something where like they could partner up with like a Tropicana Danny. Us people pay them, market them all, you know, and prop properly, you know. But yeah, the Promise Place Mall is is just a shit show. Like you know, it, it it's been for the past it's, like four or five years, like heavily. Yeah, like bad. And um, so that that's pretty much that. You know what I mean? I've I've kind of sort of tried, but. Like I said, I kind of go around a little bit a lot and say, you know, I just started. They're going to look at me like, oh, no, he's just some guy that just does TikTok videos and just wants to be known. And that's not, that's really not what I'm. They don't see you as like a brand or they company. Don't, exactly. Or you like know what I mean? Entrepreneur I'm very good, are. very good at selling. I worked as a, you know, um, as a server. He knows, you know, we worked in the same restaurant. And listen, when I tell you, bro, I will make anyone buy something they do not need. <laughs> I'm very good. Like people say it's illegal the way I like. Can make someone just buy something. Like what did Jay Z say? Um, you could sell sell water to a whale. Mm -hmm. yeah. Bro, it it and it and it's crazy because it's true. A lot of people, even like in the in the bar, like you know, when when you bartend, mm -hmm. there's people that go sit down in the bar, bro. They don't even know what they want. You can make a drink completely wrong, and they will drink that whole thing and tip yeah. you still. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. So um, you know that's that's definitely you know that whole thing. And then the work mall, I honestly feel like they racially profile. You know what I mean? Because I'm not going to lie. The area. The area. You know what I mean? It's and always felt that way like in there. Warwick. It's always yeah, felt it that way like in there. It sounds like <laughs> and so it, and, it, and it sucks because, listen, like... Yeah. So they didn't even reach out to you? Like, they didn't apologize? There wasn't anything? Nah. That's nah. insane. So, like, wow. th this is the thing, too. Uh, Rhode Island, this is my biggest focus because right now I'm glad, you know, everyone just had their comments about it. In Rhode Island right now, like, my main focus is to try to stop most, like, things like that. There's always going to be racial people around. But now, like, say, like, you, some, some you know, person at work mall will see you. You have a hoodie on or a shiesty or something like that. Yeah. They're going to think you're about to rob the store. Or, like, even if you don't have the shiesty, oh, this guy, he's probably, like, gang affiliated or something like that. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Just based off of you have a hoodie, buried. You know what I mean? And, and that right there, it, it goes a long way. Like, it really does. You know, same thing, like, with you or you. A lot of people judge, and we know, like, you walk out, say, out of here, you go into the streets, you're going to see someone giving you a stank face. Mm. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm trying to change that. Yeah, the profile. There's a lot yeah, of... Yeah, the, the profile is huge, especially... There's a, there's a, there's a lot of profile in Rhode Island. Yeah. So, um, that, honestly, there's no luck with Warwick Mall. Hopefully, there is soon. Um, but, you know, WPRI, they reached out to me to, you know, interview me, you know, talk to me and stuff like that through uh, TikTok. Um... So hopefully, like, this week, I think we're going to get that done. Um, but my other thing I do want to, you know, before this all ends, uh, another main goal is to 
maybe like you know we can probably uh, work together on trying to organize something and stuff like that but it's basically a place where any kid that likes to do tiktok videos or any influencer um singer artist anything like that because rhode island's known for state art yeah you know what i mean uh i want to make like a, a building like even if it's through like uh city council or something like that where it's like a building that you can go to they have different rooms where it could be like say like a room like this um a glow in the dark room a zombie room christmas room classroom where everyone can make their videos you know what i mean whatever it's based off of yeah consecration hub exactly you know what i mean or if they want to do podcasts there's like a room like you know what i mean and Mm -hmm. you have your section for like anyone that podcast you know something like that but uh a place where you know we can do something like that where kids can come in they can be safe have fun, you know what I mean? You have snacks, TV, whatever it is, you know what I mean? I'm down. Listen, um, I've always thought about certain ideas like that. It's definitely needed because, you know, they have so much so much money in the city and the state and they do certain ideas to give back and stuff, but I feel like they still haven't caught up with this new generation yeah. and what they're really interested in and a lot of that shit is like this podcasting, TikTok, content creation. So if someone, you know, does that, I feel like locally it can create a huge, you know, actual safe haven for those young kids that have nowhere to go at all can't afford certain things and then you know this hub becomes that main first tool first access to all this shit last question and last words from danny you are like i said in the the beginning you're known for arguably like the most popular or most known person out of rhode island right now amongst the kids you know the dancing security guard tropicana danny what would be your words of advice right now, looking into the camera, this is your solo camera, talking to the kids right now, what would be your, the words of advice if they're looking at you and they're like, yo, I need some help, I want to, you know, blow up, I want to actually be successful. What's that one key advice you would give them right now? One key advice I'll let anybody know, especially the kids, is that never, ever, ever listen to what anyone has to tell you about what you're doing because there's going to be people that are going to be with you and there's going to be people that are going to be against you on what you do and they're going to say that's you're not going to make as much money you're not going to have a life doing this and that ignore them if you are truly passionate in whatever you do can be singing could be dancing could be anything whatever you are truly passionate that makes you feel good here make sure you completely go full on do not stop you're going to have to take risks a lot of risks and it could be losing you know friends whatever it is do not surround yourself around negative people because those negative people will bring nothing to you if you see that there's someone that does the same thing connect with people that do what you're trying to do mm. that's one of the key biggest like things you have to do second is stay motivated self motivated if you're self motivated and you love your own self you will get far do not quit and just stay constant. Hashtags and all that stuff, stick to like five to four and make sure it's the same on every single post because mixing up the hashtags, no matter what it is, is going to confuse the algorithm. So keep the same hashtags, keep uploading and upload when people get out of work and school. Not like 2 p.m. Four, not like five, 6 p.m., best time to upload. And uh, the last thing is leadership. You guys all have to be leaders. I know a lot of people, you know, uh, they reach out to me. They say, oh, I'm your biggest fan. I don't call anybody my fan. Anyone that follows me on Instagram, subscribes to me on YouTube, TikTok, I don't call you guys followers. You guys are all my supporters because without you guys, I would not be here and I would not be able to have this voice that I have in the city. So you guys support me and I'm able to support you guys 10 times more because of where I'm at today. So anyone has any personal questions about any of that stuff, reach out to me and I'm more than happy to help you guys out. They gonna love me for my ambition.